They began arriving on Wednesday for their biggest game of the year. Here to see if their beloved Auburn Tigers can ruin their arch rival season. Alabama's Crimson Tide rolls into Auburn undefeated with dreams of a national championship. It's the 74th Iron Bowl. The Home Depot SEC on CBS, number two ranked Alabama and Auburn. The Iron Bowl, the pride of Alabama, and first on the field, the Auburn Tigers. And here comes number two, Alabama. Records and national rankings play no part in the Iron Bowl. It's about the pride and the passion for the state of Alabama. It's 60 minutes, man. You got a bunch of people right now. I'm going to say it again. You ain't playing for you today. I want you to remove all self today. This is not about you. This is not about, these are about people that you do know and a bunch of people you don't know. This is not about you. Let's play for everybody else. Let's Let's oh, yeah, the passion of the Iron Bowl. Craig Bullerjack, Steve Byrne. Let's strap it up here in Auburn. Well, I'll tell you what, if that doesn't make a clear statement from Gene Chizik, he told us his biggest challenge this week was going to try to keep his team from peaking too soon. I think he's done a great job. This team is ready to play today. Let's set the stage. Auburn comes in with a 7-4 and four record. Of course, Alabama, Steve, undefeated, number two in the country. They have national title hopes if they don't stumble today. And, Craig, this game is so big on its own, but as a rivalry game, there are few, if any, that are any bigger than this. These kids, it's pounded in their heads from the time they're born, the significance of this game. For Alabama, obviously protecting a perfect season, setting up the big showdown next week against Florida, the SEC championship game. Auburn, on the other hand, a win today would ruin Alabama's season and then set them up for possible major bowl consideration. Today, you're either an Auburn or Alabama fan. There's no in-between. And CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC will continue after this word from your local station. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Sonic, Macy's, New York Life, and by The Home Depot. Welcome back, Auburn, Alabama. Beautiful day, 55 degrees, and the forecast is sunny skies. Bama threw a shutout last year at Tuscaloosa, 36-0, breaking a six-game winning streak. Auburn today, the 74th Iron Bowl. This game and all SEC college football games brought to you in crystal clear CBS high definition. Over 87,000 fans on hand. The Tigers and the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Alabama. Won the toss and chose to receive. Undefeated Alabama. They roll in with a record of 11-0. They are Southeastern Conference West champions. And they will take on the Florida Gators next week here on CBS for the SEC title game. And this kick out of bounds at the two-yard line. And not the way you want to start the Iron Bowl. Not even close. You're talking about a game where Auburn, Gene Chizik told us clearly they wanted to start quickly, and that's not the way to do it. Kick out of bounds. Ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. First down. Well, Penn wagers today's referee as we look at Greg McElroy, the quarterback of Alabama, the junior from South Lake, Texas, shares the ball, Steve, connecting on the season with 17 different receivers. Alabama, potent offense. They averaged 32 points a ball game. And in that backfield, of course, the Heisman hopeful Mark Ingram. That's Greg McElroy down there. They're in the Wildcat formation to start out, Craig. And Auburn is set, and they fire up the middle, a two-yard gain as we look at today's Chick-fil-A starting lineups. 
And protecting McElroy when he's behind center is a big fast front five, two seniors, Mike Johnson and Drew Davis. And those are the same guys that will block for the Heisman hopeful Mark Ingram. Ingram averaging nearly seven yards a carry. And now we'll see McElroy go under center, second down and seven. Auburn showing blitz, they go to Ingram, bounces off the left side, and he is stuffed and pushed back by one, two, three, four, five Tigers at the 45-yard line. And defensively for Auburn, left in Antonio Coleman leads the SEC in sacks with seven and a half. The middle linebacker, Josh Bynes, leads Auburn with 84 tackles. Freshman Jonathan Evans will replace the injured El Toro Freeman. And senior Walter McFadden anchors at secondary. McFadden makes his 24th consecutive start at left corner. This crowd has been on their feet the last half hour, and they're not going to rest all day long. Marquise Mays, the motion man, he'll set up top of your screen. Four on the play clock, third down and five. McElroy pushed from the pocket, chased from behind, throws a wobbler to the near sideline, and incomplete. Julio Jones, the intended receiver. Well, a great job by the Auburn defense. You could see, obviously, that Greg McElroy did not have what he wanted up the field. The question on that play, obviously, does, does Julio Jones have control of the ball as he's going out of bounds? Looked like his feet were in, but I don't think he had complete control of the ball before he hit the sideline out of bounds. P.J. Fitzgerald set to punt. Averages 42 yards a kick. And back inside his own 15-yard line is Debman Washington. He had a 99-yard kickoff return two weeks ago against Georgia High Hanger. Washington lets this take a bounce at the three and into the end zone. Touchback in Auburn. We'll have their first possession of the afternoon. A 55-yard punt as we set the offense for the Tigers. The quarterback, senior Chris Todd, nearly 2,000 yards passing, 19 touchdowns, one shy of tying the single-season school record. A completion percentage of nearly 60%. And not the strongest arm in the world, Craig, but a guy who's very accurate. The key for him today is to get off in good rhythm and be very accurate, he, get rid of that ball on time, because when he does, he's got a lot of weapons to implement out there on the field. Head off to tape. Averages over five yards a carry. Again, as we look at the lineups presented by Chick-fil-A, and Auburn up front, Lee Zimba, makes his 37th consecutive start at left tackle. Zimba, the rest of the Tiger front line, working overtime, Steve. They open up a lot of holes for Ben Tate, number 44. Tate averages over 110 yards a football game. A pickup of one. Play action pass is Todd. Throws it a flat. Little catch by Fannin, the fullback. Out of bounds near the 30-yard line defensively for Alabama. And the Crimson Tide, no question, one of the better defensive, not the best of the country. Up front, three seniors, Washington Cody and Dederick. Linebackers, fast physical. McLean leads the Tide with 84 stops. Secondary is loaded. Strong safety mark, Barron leads the SEC. Six interceptions on the year. So third down and three, you see Tate lined up like a track runner. Now he starts off on a little pitch coming to the near side. McCaleb, first down, tripped up at the 32-yard line. And Steve, let's go above the line. Well, for Auburn on offense, the man that just picked up the first down, Big Ben, he's got to factor in. Whether he's having big runs or not, doesn't matter. Auburn has to stay committed to that running game. Alabama on defense, hey, just do what you do. You're the best, if not one, if not the best, one of the very best in the country. Bring the pressure, get after them all day long like you've done all year. Trickery, little pitch coming around the end. Terrell Zachary, big room, 50, 40, watch out, 30, makes a cut back, 20. Zachary, 15, 10, 5, touchdown. Seven yards.
Wes Byram, perfect on the season in PAT. He's 46 of 46, and the chip shot is up and good. Four plays, 80 yards, capped off by Zachary. Well, we heard from Coach Gene Chizik and Gus Malzahn, the offensive coordinator. They wanted to start early, Craig. What a great call. Set up very, very well by the fake to Ben Tate. Huge opening drive for the Auburn Tigers. Running right in your front living room, 67 yards. Terrell Zachary and Auburn up by seven. AA corporate partner invites you to celebrate game day moments in the SEC. Well, if you're an Auburn Tiger fan, what better way to celebrate Thanksgiving? And what better sight than seeing War Eagle 7 soar to new heights? Life sure is good here at Auburn University. And that is a sight to see. And Zachary's run of 67 yards, Steve Verline, a sight to see. Uh, could not have come at a better time uh, for Auburn. They wanted to make a statement early. They wanted to keep this crowd into it. You can, you can tell it's pretty electric out here right now. You know, Nick Saban told us in our talk on Tuesday, State bottom line, I am worried about Auburn's NASCAR pace. And what we saw was a mixture of a lot of different looks. Kirby Smart, their defensive coordinator, told us it's like chasing ghosts out there. And they were chasing Zachary. Yeah, very, very concerned about the different things that Auburn does. The pace, as you said, you cannot, you cannot simulate the pace of this Auburn offense the way they get. It's almost a four quarters of the two-minute offense. We did not see the hectic pace on that first drive, but what we saw was very well thought out, very well executed plays designed for a purpose that were very successful. Outside kick. All the tricks coming out in Iron Bowl 74. Auburn has possession at the 40-yard line. The first onside kick attempt this season by the Tigers. What a great call, great timing. Gene Chizik throwing out all the stops early. You could see a great fake by Wes Byram, the kicker. He acted like he was walking back to the huddle and then turned. And as he turned, the whole Auburn team turns with him and they get on top of that ball. Alabama had no chance. They weren't ready for it. This is exactly what Nick Saban was afraid of, getting the momentum, getting the energy behind this Auburn football team early. Handoff, Tate turns the corner, pushes the pile. Pass midfield to the 49-yard line. Well, right here, Craig, is Terrell, Ter Terrell Zachary. And you're going to see a fake up the middle to Ben Tate. Nobody is on the left side of the field. Wide open. It was a great play action fake to get Tate running to the right side, get Alabama pursuing that way. Zachary comes back around the left side. Nobody there, and a great move at the end to finish it off. That's the longest run against Bama's defense all season long is Tate again off the right side. He needed about a yard and a half, and he picked up two. Tate, a big back, 5'11", goes about 220. A senior from Newark, Maryland. Well, SEC rank in rush defense, Alabama dominates. Just over 70 yards allowed already. Auburn is knocking on the door with 100. Little swing pass to the flat. McCaleb turns the corner, but not quite, and a flag is out around the 45-yard line. I think we're going to see a holding call on Tommy Trott, the big tight end. Ten wagers are official. During the run, block in the back, number 18 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, down remains first. 
That's Cody Burns, the wide receiver. You can beat the crowds and get your favorite NCAA gear when you shop online at the CBS Sports Store. You'll save big on all officially licensed jerseys, caps, and more. Just go to CBSSportsStore.com right now. It is the holiday season. Steve, I'll pass along my wish list a little bit later to you. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Cody Burns, the, the young man that was called for that penalty right there, the converted quarterback from last year. He's been used in a variety of different ways this year for the Auburn Tigers. And right there, a block in the back. He hasn't been out there a lot. Not used to being out there in space doing that kind of thing. He won't make that mistake again. Team Chiswick makes offensive changes. They bring in Tate and Eric Smith, the two backs. Little pitch near side. It's Tate. Stiff arms. Oh, he took a pop. One, two, three. Alabama defenders lay the helmet. Sharif, the strong safety, along with Woodall. Let's look at what has happened with this Auburn offense under Gus Malzahn this year. Gene Chizik, last year, you can see very, very unimpressive numbers. This year, boy, all of those just solid. They're, they're up for twice as many points a game. All the way across the board, great job. There's the Wildcat. Todd takes the pass. Throws a dart over the middle. Cut inside the 30-yard line. Darvin Adams with his 45th catch, and this crowd is out of their minds in Auburn. Well, this, this, you've got Cody Burns, at quarterback. He was the quarterback last year. He's very comfortable throwing the ball, obviously. You don't see it happen very often, but Chris Todd catches the ball out there. Great protection. And then coming across, coming across the middle of the field, Darvin Adams, Chris Todd lays it right in the hole. Another huge play for the Auburn offense. Emory Blake went in motion. Now again, Burns wants to air it deep and just overthrows Adams in the end zone. You know, Craig, Cody Burns has two touchdown passes this year already. We're, we're seeing, I think, what we can expect to see all day long. Gus Malzahn can create plays with the best of them. They're taking shots. They're not going to leave any ammo in that gun that they've got. And Gene Chizik is saying, go ahead, throw it, throw it all at him. That's Coach Malzahn. He's on the field. Now they take a glance back across at the Auburn sideline. They change plays off. You saw Todd line up shotgun. Now he'll audible at the line and reset. Keeper. At the 15-yard line. What haven't we seen? What haven't we seen here in the first quarter? Well, you're going to see it was an audible by the sideline. You're going to see right here in the middle. The coaches knew you were going to get this kind of action out of the formation. Chris Todd is going to catch the ball right up the middle. There's nobody there. He's not a running quarterback. They know that in man-to-man -man defense, which is what Alabama prefers to play, nobody is assigned the quarterback, Chris Todd, a good solid gain again. And a pick up a 13, around the corner comes Michaela. Waits for his blocker, stacked up, driven back at the 12 yard line. Let's talk about Auburn inside the red zone. 35 opportunities, Steve Berline on the season. 25 touchdowns, eight field goals. They've given it away twice on fumbles. But when you're 33 and 35 getting points on the board, not bad. Well, you forget, forget not only the 33 or 35, it's the 25 touchdowns that impresses me. That, that is astronomical. Over 70% of the time in the red zone, this team is scoring touchdowns. Burns back at quarterback. Now they're going to run option. Makes a nice cut, stacked up, and a pickup of maybe two up to the 11-yard line. Ali Sharif, the strong safety again and on the tackle. Now what we need to realize is not only Auburn excellent in the red zone on offense, but Alabama is one of the very best on defense in the red zone. They're, they're top five in almost every category defensively across the board. And right there you see Kirby Smart, defense coordinator, but only 37% of the time are touchdowns allowed by this Alabama defense. Ninth play of this drive coming up. Again, Burns the quarterback, flip to the far side, picked off. Ah, the whistles are going to call that play dead. Justin Woodall, the free safety, and there's a flag at the 14-yard line. Nick Saban rips off the headset. So Penn Wagers and his crew huddle up. I see two flags near and far side.
Well, the coaches were jumping on Justin Woodall pretty hard there, who had the interception. Would maybe, have been his fourth pick of the season. Maybe his reaction was considered unsportsmanlike. Prior to the snap, false start. 73 on the offense. Five yard penalty. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike. Number 27 against the defense. Half the distance to the goal. See if you can hear the whistle. Here's Lee Zim, but he moved early. And there's a whistle stopping play. You heard it. And then you'll see that reaction right there. That is not allowed in the college game. Any, any sign of taunting or unsportsmanlike activity is going to be called by these referees. So inside the 10-yard line. We've seen Wildcat, we've seen it all up the middle. Tate running, turning those legs to the two-yard line. And that picks up the first down, Craig. And I'll tell you, what you saw right there, you don't see a lot against Alabama. Straight ahead, run right at him. But what Auburn has succeeded in doing already, Alabama doesn't know whether they're going to give the ball up inside or take it outside. They've got them playing back on their heels already. Looks like this will be a direct snap to Tate. Wildcat plus two, Tate inside and hits a wall of white. Well, Nick Saban told us, Steve, this will be the most productive offense we have played all season long. And, and they've seen some good offenses this year, but they cannot, again, it cannot be emphasized they have seen nothing like this offense, and you can't simulate it in practice because the scout team offense in practice is showing, you're showing them cards. They don't know how to execute at the same level as a team that gets these reps in every single day and is used to working at this pace. Tommy Trot, you see number five to tight end. Tate, Chris Todd back under center. It'll pitch out. Tate waiting, turns the corner, stacked up and dropped inside the one yard line. It'll be third down and goal for Auburn. Well, you know, you can see right there the pride of this Alabama defense. That last touchdown that scored was the first touchdown in the first quarter of the season that Alabama has allowed right here. They do not want to allow a second. You're going to see the pursuit all day long. This team will not back down. They will run to the football. They will keep coming with pressure. They won't give you an inch. Gene Chizik said you've got to earn everything with this defense. Third down and goal at the one yard line. Here's Stumble. And the snap into the end zone. Touchdown! Eric Smith! Chris Todd with the flick of the wrist. And Auburn leads by 13. And that pass, his 20th of the season, just ties the Auburn single season record held by Jason Campbell and the great Pat Sullivan back in 1971. Byron stays perfect on the season, 48 of 48, and a stunner brewing in Auburn, Alabama. Todd flips it out, and Eric Smith grabs a touchdown. 12 plays, 58 yards, Tigers by 14. Tim Brando in New York. The Orlando Sentinel is reporting that Tiger Woods was seriously injured in a car accident early this morning. According to the Florida Highway Patrol, Woods pulled out of his driveway in the Isleworth community when he struck a fire hydrant and drove into a tree on his neighbor's property. Woods was transported to Health Central Hospital. According to the Florida Highway Patrol, Woods was in serious condi uh, condition. WESH in Orlando reported that he was treated for facial lacerations. And according to the Florida Highway Patrol, alcohol did not play a role in the crash. But charges are pending. We'll update you at halftime. All right, Tim Brando, thank you so much. Our best, of course, to Tiger Woods. Well, what an impact in the game of golf. And our wishes to Tiger. And, and so much more his impact but you just hope for the best in a situation like this we don't know that any more than what we were told well here in Auburn Chris Todd tying the Auburn single season record with his 20th touchdown throw to Eric Smith 
and a shocker brewing. 14 0 here in the quarter. Already Auburn has rushed the ball 12 times, Steve, for 114 yards. Now Morgan Hall, number 37, will kick this time, teed up at the 30 yard line. Last time, onside kick. This time, Auburn will kick away. And for the second time here in the quarter, a kickoff by the Tigers falls out of bounds inside the five-yard line. Alabama again with great field position to start this drive. And this really is the only thing Gene Chizik can complain about today. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball will be placed out to 40. First down. Well, let's look at that last touchdown. Right here, you're going to see this is an offensive lineman, Byron Isom right here. Here is Eric Smith. Both he and the receiver are going to go straight out to the flat. You're going to see no one accounts for Eric Smith right there in the flat. The formation, the personnel groupings, they changed so much, so quickly, so often, that Alabama was not ready for it. Already 16 plays have been run by Auburn. It was three and out, the first possession by Bama. Play action, McElroy. Drop to the flat, his tight end peak. Oh, he lost it, but got it back at the 45-yard line. Colin Peake sure handed 21st catch of the season. He had to set out last year, Steve, after playing a couple of seasons at Georgia Tech. Well, this Alabama offense is not used to being in this position, down 14 points early in the ball game. They're not built to be a come-from-behind football team. They're built to be in control of the game. Interesting to see if they keep their poise if Greg McElroy will not try to force the issue continue to be patient back there. Pete goes in motion. They're going to pitch it off. Here comes Ingram. Stacked up. And again, the pursuit impressive. Dropped at the 41-yard line. And Steve, let's go back above the line. Well, truly, Craig, I believe for Alabama on offense, it starts with Julio Jones. Oh, oh, Julio, we got to see some plays out of you today because we know that Auburn is going to be focused on shutting down Mark Ingram like that last play. He's not going to win his Heisman here. That's what, Alabama, that's what the Auburn Tigers are saying. So Julio Jones is going to need to step up and make some plays. Ingram three carries, just one yard here in the opening quarter. Under five minutes to play. Boy, it's deafening. Here in Auburn, Alabama. Iron Bowl 74. McElroy has to tuck that football away. Mike Block making the initial hit. And again, three and out for the tie. This is just good, solid pressure, coverage, everything going well for Auburn right now, offensively and defensively. They are in complete control at this point in the ball game. P.J. Fitzgerald just got the kick away. Good hang time. Washington underneath it, lost it, and jumps back on it inside the 20 at the 17-yard line. A 42-yard kick, Auburn on top of number two ranked Alabama by 14. And time now for our Home Depot Tools to Victory. Well, Gus Malzahn and Gene Chizik have not hesitated to pull out the stops. You saw the reverse for the big touchdown in the first drive by Terrell Zachary. Very well set up play and a great cutback right there by Zachary to get on the board first. And what do they do to follow it up? Well, they come with the onside kick Surprised by Wes Byron, he recovers it himself, and that sets up another opportunity to make a big play, a little razzle-dazzle, the flea flicker out of the Wildcat formation, punctuated by another touchdown, a pass from Chris Todd to Mr. Smith, the fullback. Great job by Auburn so far of mixing things up and really keeping Alabama on their heels. Alabama. Number one ranked offense in total yards allowed this season, just 225 yards. They're number two in scoring defense, less than 10 points a ball game. And Steve, Nick Saban, you see him pacing the sideline. Already today, two touchdowns. Bama's allowed only six touchdowns in the last seven SEC games. Tate. And pushes past the 20. They'll put his forward progress at the 22-yard line. Rolando McLean, the middle linebacker, and one of those Butkus Award finalists in on the tackle. Now there's the national rankings. Total defense number one, rush defense second, pass defense fifth rank. They've got 18 interceptions on the year. 
amazing on defense, but boy, they sure look like they're not too comfortable out there on the field at this point. Running up on three minutes to play in the opening quarter, and again, the switch by Todd at the line. Play clock to five, and it runs down to three. Runs to two, they got it off. He fakes it to the sideline over the top. He goes, dangerous pass. He wanted Tommy Trott to tie it in, threw in a double coverage. And Tommy Trott was wide open over the middle of the field. That's the first mistake we've seen by Chris Todd today. Rolando McClain, the All-American linebacker for Alabama, we talked to him this week, and he said, you know, the key is not to get caught up in all the different movement and personnel groupings. you got to just take that final picture. He's the one in control making the calls. And when you see Auburn changing plays like they are right now, you see McClain up there. He's changing the defense for Alabama to try and mix it up on Auburn. Yeah, he's the quarterback defensively for the Tide. We've seen another change now out there. Now here goes McClain changing it back. This is the chess match. Down to four on the play clock, down to three, snaps away. Again, there's a flag down over the top, same play, incomplete. They went right back to that same play, incomplete, and just off the fingertips of Tommy Trott. Th that was almost the exact same play and execution in every sense of the word. I mean, that, that was, they, they went back to the same play, and Chris Todd did exactly the same thing on the throw to a wide open Tommy Trott. That's hard to do, just so you know. It's hard to miss a pass the exact same way you missed a Illegal shift one. on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. So fourth down, and the punter, Clinton Durst, the senior, will trot on. Averages just under 41 yards a kick. And he'll boot this inside his own 10-yard line. And Javier Arena, so, so dangerous on punt returns. Seven career touchdowns on punt returns. They'll kick it away. It's short and hangs and goes out of bounds at the 41-yard line. So field position has not been an issue for Alabama. This will be their third start at the 40 or better. Let's take a look at our SEC moment presented by Sonic. Back to 1989, marking the first time the Iron Bowl was ever played at Auburn. James Joseph scored a touchdown in Auburn's first possession, and Gary Hollingsworth had two touchdown passes to Marco Battle to put the Tigers ahead. Win Lyle's field goal capped off a 30-20 win for Auburn, and that effectively ended previously unbeaten Alabama's chance of a national championship. Kind of an eerie similarity on the way here in Auburn. And before today's game, a ceremony celebrating that 20th anniversary. The players are back at Jordan Air Stadium. And right there, the great coach Pat Dye with the tip of the hat. 1989 SEC champions. Isn't that strange? 1989, Bama, 10-0, number two in the country. Today, 11-0, number two in the country. They're down 14. It is eerily similar. Alabama better get their act together. As we stated, you know, they're, they're not built to be a comfort behind team, in my opinion. But they've got a lot of veteran experience out there. They should keep their poise and just try and take it one drive at a time. McElroy. Under center. Have yet to pick up a first down in this first quarter. Pressure. Dumps it off. Dropped. In the hands of Julio Jones. Let's send you to New York for this John Hancock update. Here's Tim. Craig and Steve, Cincinnati not getting caught looking ahead to next week's Big East championship of sorts against uh, Pittsburgh. Tony Pike, 21 yards to Marty Gilliard, six touchdowns for him. That's a school record, three more than his previous high, 49 to 30 right now. They get pit next week. Well, Tim, Cincinnati, the Bearcats have won 16 straight regular season games. It dates back to October of 2008. And right now, Alabama sweating a bit on the road. McElroy, good protection, throws underneath. It's caught. Darius Hanks in the first first down for the Crimson Tide. So move the chains past midfield. They'll mark it at the 43-yard line, a pickup of 15. And that is exactly what Alabama needed. They needed to get something positive to happen to try and take advantage of this field position they've had. Greg McElroy has had very good protection. He just hasn't been able to find people down the field, and as a result, he's been getting hit because he's holding the ball for so long. Right there, you saw 
Darius Hanks come open. Good conversion for him. So the first first down for the tie. They go to Ingram. And Ingram, one, two, three, four, five. My goodness, they have been on him all day. Well, we talked to Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator for Auburn. He talked about this guy, Mark Ingram. He's so good, so explosive. And they, he said what we've got to do is we have to hold the point of attack on this guy, not let him find a seam, and then set the edges. And then our backside players have to stay on their feet because he's so good at cutting back and making you pay if you over pursue. And then we have to gang tackle. Other than that, our job's easy. Oh yeah, real easy. On the road, he's terrific. Nearly 153 yards a game. And struggling here, four carries, just one yard. Over the middle, McElroy. A little pitch and catch, Julio Jones trying to regain some confidence. Bynes and Evans team up to make the tackle. Julio Jones, a big target, Steve, at 6'4", 211. Now, I tell you, the first seven games this season, just 13 receptions. He did struggle with a midseason knee injury. Slowed him down, especially at Ole Miss. But the last four games, he's turned it on. And Greg McElroy told us he's been so impressed with his perseverance, his his attitude through this knee struggle that he's had. And he admitted that maybe he tried to force the ball to him a little bit too much earlier in the year. Now Julio Jones is starting to come around and get himself open a little bit more. They're down at two. Ingram the lone back. Handoff. Nothing fancy. Right up the middle. Tripped up. Ingram picks up three and a first down. So the drive will roll on to Ingram. A gaudy 6.8 yards a carry. And he, he's been absolutely phenomenal in games versus top 25 teams. Auburn in, in many polls top 20. They're, they're, they're ranked 24th or 25th. He's averaged 178 yards rushing the four times he's faced top 25 teams this year. He's not on that pace right now. Auburn doing a good job of shutting him down. Sixth play of this drive as we are running out of time here in the opening quarter. McElroy in the pocket. Good protection. He throws underneath Ingram with the catch. And he pushes his way down here to the 25-yard line. And the freshman, Jonathan Evans, playing that right side linebacker position with the tackle. What a wild first quarter. 15 minutes in the books. Auburn up on Alabama by 14. We'll return to Auburn after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, home of the SEC Championship. Tim Brando in New York, you are looking live at the crash scene in Orlando, a scene at Tiger Woods' home. The Orlando Sentinel is reporting that Tiger Woods was seriously injured in a car accident early this morning. According to the Florida Highway Patrol, Woods pulled out of his driveway in the Isleworth community when he struck a fire hydrant, then drove into a tree on his neighbor's property. Woods was transported to Health Central Hospital. Published reports are saying that he has since been released. The airbags in Woods' vehicle did not deploy, which means he was traveling less than 33 miles per hour. WESH in Orlando reported that he was treated for facial lacerations, and according to the Florida Highway Patrol, alcohol did not play a role in the crash, but charges are pending. We'll update you at halftime. All right, Timmy, thanks. We'll update you, I'm sure, all day long on Tiger Woods in that situation. Well, great news that he was released from yes. the hospital. That's, uh, that gets a lot of people breathing a lot easier. I know that. We start the second quarter here in Auburn. And the Tigers with a 14-0 lead on number two ranked Alabama. McElroy, handoff Trent Richardson, the fine young freshman from Pensacola, is up to around the 21-yard line. And Craig Bowler, Jack, Steve Burline, bottom, bottom line, are you surprised at this start? Gene Chizik wasted no time, pulled a lot of tricks out of the bag. Well, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't surprised a little bit. I mean, it's, it's been an absolute, complete control domination so far by Auburn at this point, to this point. And whether it can continue, we'll see. It looks like Alabama's getting some rhythm back now in their offense. But boy, this Auburn Tiger team came out and surprised Alabama, so yes, I am surprised. Tigers on the blitz, they throw, they break it, and a catch. A little pitch and catch, Richardson inside the 10 as McElroy took care of the pressure and dumped that ball to the flat. A 
Well, you're going to see just another good example of execution. You got Trent Richardson, number three, flaring out to the left. And then right there, Mike Blanc, number 93 right here. He realizes it was almost set up as though it was going to be a screen pass to the outside where he was enticed to come up the field and then realized too late that he had made a mistake. Handoff draw. Richardson breaks a tackle and taken down right at the one-yard line. Nearly broke it. Josh Bynes, the middle linebacker, saved the touchdown. Hey, Bill, when we talked to Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator for Alabama. In fact, I spoke to him on the field before the game. He was very concerned about the depth of his defense and especially the fact that one of their star players, sophomore Toro Freeman, outside linebacker, was not going to be able to play today. They seem to be finding something over here on the left side of the Alabama offense. They're attacking their very hard. That's where Otoro Freeman would normally be. Well, they brought in a lineman for the block, and it's in for a touchdown. Richardson. That's the old fridge play. Uh, the a la Chicago Bears, Terrence Cody. The nose guard came in, threw a block, and touchdown for the freshman. The defensive lineman, Terry, Terrence Cody, 300 and all 354 pounds of him leading Trent Richardson who we saw almost exclusively there the last four or five plays of that drive providing a spark for this Alabama offense Lee Tiffin is set to try the extra point 34 36 on the year and the kick is up and good so after a 14-0 start by Auburn in the opening quarter, Alabama puts together a 10-play drive, 58 yards, just over four minutes on the clock, and Trenton Richardson runs it in for Bama's first touchdown of the afternoon. And Terrence Cody plowing away into the end zone. And back in Auburn, Alabama, Iron Bowl 74. Alabama on the board with a touchdown. And now it's time for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Action Cam. Well, let's look. This is Terrence Cody right here. Watch what he does to clear this lane out. You're going to see an absolute run over. That's, that's, that's 354 pounds running right over Darren Bates, the, the safety. Quite a mismatch in Terrence Cody's favor I would have to say and Trent Richardson's job right there very easy walks into the end zone but a statement drive there by Alabama making it very clear they're not gonna fade away they've got too much to play for the big game next week against Florida they cannot look past this game obviously they've got to get back into it they did right there 10 plays on that scoring drive of course if you just joined us a big story developing with Tiger Woods he was uh, injured uh, in a car accident outside his home this morning and that story continues to develop Tim Brando will keep you updated throughout the afternoon here on CBS Lee Tiffin kicks it away right down the middle Washington at the 10 yard line Washington at the 25 30 makes a cut slips and slides up to around the 36 yard line and a fine return by Washington Well, let's look at what's happened so far for this Auburn offense. You saw the great initial drive play that Terrell Zachary coming around in the reverse and a nice cut back here to get into the end zone. Puts him up 7-0. Great downfield blocking by his teammates, escorting him into the end zone. And then right there, the nice job of, of Chris Todd keeping his feet and finding Eric Smith in the end zone. Now, the question, in my opinion, is whether Auburn can keep the pressure on them. They were up 14-0 to Georgia couple weeks ago and ended up losing that game. Well, McCaleb takes the handoff from Cody Burns. And they've gone with different formations, different looks. They've had Todd at quarterback. They put Cody Burns, who was a quarterback, turned wide receiver. And now you see Chris Todd return. Todd had that so shoulder surgery, Steve. Remember back in January, did not participate in spring football, got a little behind, and now just really getting his rhythm back. And, and there was a period earlier in the year where the, he almost lost his position. Gene Chisholm decided to stay with him, and it's paid off for him. Throws in traffic. That catch is made, and how tough. Fannin grabs it. And they will go to Fannin quite a bit. He came in with 35 receptions on the season, nearly 400 yards of receiving yards and three touchdowns. And the Alabama defense really pointed him out as being kind of a key to this offense. They find ways to get the ball to him. He's a great receiver. 
you saw right there is also a load to bring down. Three wide outs, top of your screen. And this is what Todd does. He'll set and then take a look at the sideline. He'll then make the call. And then you see Alabama countering by changing their defense. Now you called it right. It's a chess match. Checkers. Pressure from the corner. Down goes Todd. Javier Arenas, he is the corner blitz guy on this Bama defense and runs in for his fifth sack of the season. Right there, and you saw that's, that's his fifth sack, as you said, Craig. And one of the things that we know is going to happen, he's going to come off the edge. And Alabama is known as a man-to-man -man defense and a pressure defense. And they really felt that because Auburn has to focus so much on what they're doing themselves all week long with all the high intensity, high rep work and different personnel group is almost a block punt there. Alabama thought that they could confuse them maybe with some of their pressures today. That was a good example right there. Now Durst for the second time kicks away from Javier Arenas. So they do not want to put the ball in his hands. Timeout, Auburn by seven. Well, you look at Stanley and Steve in the SEC East. Florida, a runaway winner, 8-0 in the conference, 11-0 overall, ranked number one in the country. We check the SEC West. Alabama with a runaway. The Western Conference win, 11-0, number two ranking. Those two will meet next week. Georgia Dome, Atlanta, number one, number two. We'll see it right here on CBS. Coverage begins at 3 o'clock. McElroy sets and fires a dark cut, tackle, couldn't make it. Colin Peak breaks to the 50-yard line. And so far, Al Auburn has done the job stopping Mark Ingram. Well, he's got five carries for only four yards today. That has to be the priority for this Auburn defense. They've done a super job of swarming to the football. Now, we saw a little bit of a counter mentality by Alabama on the last drive going to the short passes and then Trent Richardson out of the backfield. We can see right now you've got Mark Ingram split way out to the wide side, the left side of the field. They're going to try and find ways to get that man the ball. They've got to do it to be most effective. With the shotgun, McElroy pressure, steps and throws. The catch, Julio Jones, and he has swarmed under at the 45-yard line. Now you talk about a... Big wide out at 6-4, goes about 215, only a sophomore from Foley, Alabama. If he's 215, I'm 180. And that, that's about 45 pounds off of what I am. He, he is a monster. He's much bigger than 215. But what I what I still believe Alabama, they can dink and dunk all over the place, and they're doing a good job of it right now, but they've got to find a way to make plays up the field at some point. Well, those numbers tell you the tide has turned a bit in favor of the Crimson Tide. Ingram, again, nothing. Absolutely nothing up the gut. Maybe a yard to the 44-yard line. They'll move the chains as we are under 10 minutes to play in the first half. And one of the things that makes this Alabama offense so consistently efficient, and they're not spectacular at all. Obviously, Mark Ingram spectacular as, as a running back. But this offense, the noise, the crowd's getting into it right now. But... They do not have bad plays in general. They keep moving the chains, putting themselves in desirable situations. Less than two yards a carry. It's third down. Let's call it three. Mays, the motion man. Five-step drop. Pressure throws. Incomplete. And he nearly took out an official along the way. Boy, Josh Bynes bringing the pressure on McElroy. Yeah, no doubt about it. He, McElroy paid the price on that play. Greg McElroy did not have a chance. It was great coverage up the field as well. And uh, nothing that official could do to get out of the way of that pass. Greg McElroy had nowhere to go with that football under great pressure. Super job by the Auburn defense there. Damon Washington set to return the kick from P.J. Fitzgerald. Guys at high and a fair catch at the 11 yard line dropped it. That sun right now is smack dab in the middle of your eyes, and you see the official, the field judge said, Nope, Auburn football. 
and they're still digging. Hey, this well, is this is Iron Bowl for 74. Yes. There's a little emotion out oh, there. Oh, now the field. flags. Mm -hmm. And you got players from both sides, and coaches now have come out and put a wall up between the two. You know, both coaches, Nick Saban, Gene Chizik, both said it's all about emotion. Who can have a tempo of emotion throughout four quarters of football? And they both said the same thing about the importance of being the most physical team on the field today. Making that statement early and continuing to pound it home by getting after the other team. Whoever was going to be the most physical, both coaches felt that team would win the ball game today. Here's Penn Wagers. After the play was over, personal foul. Number six on the receiving team. Penalty, half the distance to the goal. First down. So the personal foul, whistled on McFadden. One of the top special team players for Auburn. And so this drive will start back at the 15 yard line. The five yard line actually. So now there's a timeout, 9.08 to play. Opening quarter, Washington the fair catch. Put it on the turf. We'll be back to Auburn after this on CBS. Auburn leading number two ranked Alabama 14-7. Beautiful aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports today provided by DirecTV high over Jordan Air Stadium. Over 87,000 in the stands today. And about Monday, TV comedy just doesn't get any more awesome than this. Catch Allison Han Hannigan, Jason Siegel, and the always awesome Neil Patrick Harris in How I Met Your Mother. Monday, only on CBS. What a crowd on hand. Iron Bowl, Auburn, Alabama. Last year, the Crimson Tide, Steve, ran away. 36-0. And today, the Tigers have come to play. Different ball game today, but now Auburn has got to be very careful here. You're backed up in your own end zone. You're still in control of this game, but this is an Alabama defense that can make a difference and make an impact in a hurry. Now this Todd has got to be careful with that football. Very opportunistic. You put it on the deck, they're going to pick it up, make you pay. Todd from the shotgun. On the ground comes Tate. Stiff arms his way, still on his feet, and picks up an extra yard at the seven-yard line. 19th in the country in rushing. Came in, Steve, with 1,209 yards, a 5.4 average, eight touchdowns. And he's had six 100-yard games this season. And everything really does start with the running game for this Auburn offense. They, they are very balanced. They put up consistent numbers in the passing game, but it all starts with Big Ben Tate being able to find lanes in the running game. Bamba showing blitz, Todd in his own end zone. Sets up and fires, tough catch, out of bounds. Boy, leaning out, Darvin Adams, but it falls incomplete. You look at the first four possessions. Four Good. plays, 80 yards, touchdown, 12 plays. What a, a series that was for a touchdown and back-to-back -back punts. Yeah, you can't, they came out and made a statement, but since those first two drives, Alabama seems to have calmed down a little bit and been much more confident in what's coming at him. They're putting more pressure. That was a blitz right there by Rolando McClain. Not a great job of picking it up by Ben Tate, and I think that threw Chris Todd's throw off a little bit. Todd again takes a glance at the Auburn sideline. Play clock at five from the shotgun. And they have really zeroed in now on number 44. Well, that, that's the right call for Auburn on offense, though. You, you really, you're, you're in control of this ball game score-wise. You're up 14 to seven. Don't risk it by taking a shot at the field. Maybe you get a sack, fumble, an easy touchdown for Alabama, or you get an interception. Sure, Auburn would like to have <laughs> maybe blocked Eric Anders a little bit for Alabama. Maybe somebody could have got a hand on him and had a lane to get that ball up in there, but not a bad decision by Gus Malz on the play at safe there. Clinton Durst, pressure just got it away. And a high hanger, Javier Arenas pedals back inside his own 45, breaks a tackle at 50, and spun out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Say Arenas is so dangerous, first time he's had his hands on the ball this afternoon. You know, he told us how interesting, seven punt returns for touchdowns, but he said, you know what, guys, I'm always nervous when I'm ready to take back a punt. Amazing. 
7.49 to play in the half. And Durst just got it away. Tim Brando in New York. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Spencer, Tony, and I will get you caught up on all of today's action, including the latest on Tiger Woods' car accident earlier this morning in Orlando, where it's been reported that he was injured suffering facial lacerations. Now let's get you back to the Iron Bowl. So Auburn 14 and number two ranked Alabama 7. 74th Iron Bowl. Young and old on hand today, Jordan Air Stadium. And it's 14-7 as Nick Saban. I'll tell you, a little shell shock to start this game because Gene Chizik, big plays, wildcat offense. No, no onside doubt. Onside kicks. No doubt we've seen a lot in a, in a very exciting first half. Nick Saban has got to feel better, though, now about the kind of pace this game has taken on for his team. First and ten. Play action. McElroy up over the top. Go for the home run. <laughs> Nearly intercepted. It was tipped three times. And McFadden nearly pulled off one of the plays of the day. Well, well that's Greg McElroy taking a shot. But watch right here. This is Julio Jones. He's going to come across the field. Look how wide open he is because everybody goes deep. You can see there's nothing out here in front of Julio Jones. And that ball was forced up the field. I, I admire Greg McElroy's mentality trying to take a shot up the field. But your big play guy is running across the field pretty much uncovered. That's a big, big play, possibly a touchdown for Alabama. Ingram and Upchurch. Play clock to two, just got it off. McElroy pedals back, sets up the screen. It's caught. Upchurch makes a cut, breaks a tackle at the 35 and pushed out of bounds near the 32-33 yard line. Very good execution. You're going to see this whole left side getting out on the screen pass out in front of Upchurch. Good job by the lineman getting out there. Left guard Mike Johnson, super job right there making the key block and then Trent or, uh, Roy Upchurch making one man miss, picking up a nice game, converting the first down. Ingram is lined up far side, top of your screen. Empty backfield, McElroy, touch and run, Zamboy, Auburn. No fooling. McElroy, a little shaken up. He took a shot across the chops at the 35, courtesy of Josh Bynes. Yeah, Josh Bynes does a great job. With Greg McElroy, that's a quarterback draw. Not the right, not the right call at the right time. Also, Mike Blanc got in there, number 93, but Josh Bynes makes the first tap coming off the backside. You saw right there a little bit of a change up by Alabama and Coach Jim McElwain, but Greg McElroy is not a running quarterback. Under seven minutes to play. Second down 11 here in the first half. Ingram lines up alongside McElroy. Play clock again winding down. Draw play. Ingram again tries to attack the front of the Auburn Tiger defense and there has just been nothing there in this first half. Yeah, that, that's another play. Great play by Josh Bond, middle linebacker. Get right up in there, just meeting Mark Ingram. Now, it's, it's baffling to me how you could have a straight-ahead power running play with nobody assigned to block in the middle linebacker, Josh Bynes. He didn't have to avoid anybody, go through anybody. He just met Mark, Mark Ingram right in the hole. Seven carries for the Heisman hopeful. Eight yards here in the first half. McElroy. Sets, fires, over the top, cut! Colin Peake, touchdown, Bama! But a flag is down, and now we got a little push and shoving at the 42-yard line. Looks like Alabama believes it's on Auburn. It is. Roughing the passer, that is a 33-yard touchdown, and McElroy finds the tight end. And that was Darren Bates, the penalty was called on, but a great job by Greg McElroy stepping up in the pocket, making the throw. 
That was a great job by Colin Peake. He ran a quarter. Personal foul. Roughing the face. Passer. 15-yard penalty. Number 27 will be administered on the succeeding kickoff. But you had Colin Peake going on the corner route. Julio Jones came underneath. And a good job delivering a strike by Greg McElroy. Big throw at a big time. Big throw. 15th touchdown toss of the season. Now Tiffin is in to try to tie this game up. He just joined us, Auburn. 14 quick points in the opening quarter. And now Bama has answered back with 14 of their own, or 13 to this point, with a PAT to come. And Tiffin kicks it through. McElroy, boy, they took a shot right on the head. Darren Bates, the safety came up. The Fman delivers the blow. And on the other end, Peak runs it to the corner. And we're tied at 14. Tim Brando in New York. A couple of new developments now about Tiger Woods' car accident early this morning. His agent, Mark Steinberg, told USA Today that Woods is fine. However, when CBS Sports contacted him earlier, he replied, no comment. The hospital he was taken to, Health Central outside Orlando, is expected to release a statement on Woods shortly. Now back to Craig and Steve at the Iron Bowl. All right, Tim, thank you. We'll, I know you'll keep us updated throughout. Interesting story down in uh, Florida so concerning Tiger Woods. 14 all. 14 points scored early by Auburn. Bama has answered with 14 of their own. Five plays, Steve, 45 yards, and a quick 33-yard strike to the tight end. Well, you're going to see right here is Colin Peak. He's going to run up into the corner while Julio Jones comes under this way. The Greg McElroy stands in the pocket and does a great job delivering a strike to a big, big target, Colin Peak, for the touchdown. Peak scores his second touchdown of the season, and we're tied up at 14. And Tiffin is set to kick. Well, what a leg. What a leg. Hit it into the second. Hit it into the second row. Well, Sunday on 60 Minutes. Make sure you stay tuned. Bob Ballard, the man who discovered the Titanic, takes 60 minutes on an exciting new discovery that's coming up on Sunday. Five thirty-one to play, first half. A change of emotion. You can feel that tide of emotion. First quarter belonged to Auburn. Bama's come back to own the second quarter. And now the question is, and it's been a, a game of peaks, of highs and lows, and Auburn has to find that emotional high once again. Yeah, it, it, they've got to find a way to get this crowd back in to get their confidence back up. Cody Burns, trickery, Tate gives it back. Around the corner comes Fannin at the 30. Oh, he puts the pads down and delivers a lick at the 34-yard line. Now they're going back to that little fancy play. Well, they're mixing it up, doing it out of different formations. It's a handoff to Tate, who flips it back to Fannin, coming around the edge. And a good job of getting there. Loss of contain by the Alabama defense. That was Luther Davis, number 96, that let, let the play get outside of him. Big pickup for Auburn. And their first first down of the second quarter. Again, double play action pass, tied up top. Single coverage, and a flag is down. Two are down. Eric Anders, the jackbacker, number 32. You know what? Got turned around and actually just went ahead and make the tackle. Well, Javier Arenas told us that Fannin is the key to this offense. They try to get him flexed out outside like that and get the matchups. They had the matchup on linebacker Eric Anders. And what happened, though? Pass interference, number 32 on the defense. Penalty, 15 yards. Previous spot, automatic. First down. But one, one of the knocks that we've heard on Chris Todd is that he, up the field, his arm is not that strong. If that ball was thrown out in front, and you can see no doubt, no Eric doubt. Anders made no attempt on that football, ran right into Mario Fannin coming back. But if Chris Todd gets that ball out in front of Mario Fannin, he had two steps on Eric Anders. Could very well have been a touchdown. Out goes Todd, back comes Cody Burns. 
Hand off with a cut back for Tate. Has room at the 50. Another little juke at the 45 and is popped and dropped at the 42-yard line. Big Ben Tate, Ali Sharif, the strong safety. In on the stop. Looks as though Auburn, a little bit more real. They found a, a, another little way to attack this Alabama offense personnel-wise. Mixing it up. And Tate with 11 carries in the first half for 41 yards. Now Todd comes in from the sideline, huddles up. They line up three, top of your screen. That ball is down. Alabama jumps on it. Crimson Tide recovers at the 47-yard line. And Eric Anders, who was just whistled for that pass interference, jumps on that loose football. And he made the hit, too. I believe he made the sack and the fumble. There he is coming through, making the hit, sees the ball is out, and then has the presence to get on it. The athletic ability to get He came in untouched. And again, it was, it was made very clear by Kirby Smart. He felt that their blitz package would give Auburn some trouble because he didn't feel like Auburn would spend enough time on blitz pickup. They spend so much time creating their new plays, trying to get reps on those, that they don't prepare for the blitz pickup. Might have some shots at some big plays. And the ninth game this season, the Bama's had two or more sacks in a game. They piled up two here in the first half. Alabama, after the fumble recovery, goes back to work with tied at 14. And Trent Richardson trying to shake a tackler and has dropped at the 44. I tell you, you have Ingram, a sophomore. You have Trent Richardson, a freshman. Roy Upchurch, who's a senior, has a lot of a lot of experience. But their, their per carry average is, is uh, astonishing. Ingram at nearly seven. Uh, you got Upchurch at over six, and Richardson over five. And, and we're seeing more of Richardson here. I think what Jim McElwain is saying is they, they they've got our base offense figured out pretty well with Ingram to this point. Let's try and mix it up and keep him off guard. Two wide outs near side. Stepping, throwing, McElroy, nothing fancy. Julio Jones breaks a tackle and gallops up to around the 32-yard line. Nico Thorpe, the right corner, with the stop. And Jones a little shaken up as he heads to the sideline. You look at the running back comparisons today. Ingram, who has Heisman uh, hopes, just eight yards on seven carries. Ben Tate, uh, 41 yards on 11 carries this afternoon. Right now, the check mark goes to Ben Tate for sure. But Alabama has very methodically gained control of momentum in this ball game. Hand off Richardson, cuts it back, chopped down. That's inside the 30-yard line. They'll mark him at the 27 or the 28. You, know, you make a great point, Steve. Ingram looks like they have zeroed in on number 22, and now Richardson gives them a little bit more cutback ability. Right, no doubt about it. They're different style of running back, and I think you got to give Jim McElwain and Nick Saban credit here. They've said, you know, our horse, Mark Ingram, boy, this defense is locked in on him. We've got to spread the field a little bit more. They're going three wide receivers and trying to get Trent Richardson up there in the creases, in the seams, and doing a good job of it. Richardson right alongside McElroy, second down five. Pedals back, steps up in the pocket, flushed on the run. He'll step and throw, and it's complete. Boy, stepping in, nearly got a pick was Nico Thorpe. Well, coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman, and Tony Barnhart will be along with scores and highlights, plus a preview of tomorrow's clash between Florida State and number one ranked Florida. That's all coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. And make sure you stay tuned. A story that's continuing to develop, the Tiger Woods car crash earlier this morning outside his home in Florida. Tim Brando will be along with all the news at halftime. Third down and five at the 26-yard line. Ingram back in the lineup, little pitch outside. He'll cut back, and again, look at the guys in blue. They just put a target on his back, and Josh Bynes drops him at the 25-yard line. Well, I think Josh Bynes is just playing a spectacular football game to this point. He has Mark Ingram in his sights whenever he steps on the field. Bynes is running free to him like he knows exactly 
where Mark Ingram is going to go with that I get football. the feeling this is a personal. I think it is. I think Josh Bond is saying, you know what? I'm going to do whatever I've got to do to shut down that number 22. Tiffin from 42 yards, 25 to 28 on the year. Short. This ball may have been tipped. It's short, wide right, and no, Auburn holes. So the 42-yard field goal. Something happened Falls there. Falls short. It may very well have been tipped, or maybe it wasn't hit well by, well by Tiffin, but it, it's hard to tell. There were a couple big paws up in the air. I thought but it was Mike Blanc. Could very big well have been. Big number 93, but that ball just changed direction. It died down in a hurry, and he knew it. Perfect so Tiffin Auburn. off the mark from 42 yards. And the score remains 14 all. So Auburn with a minute 52 to play. Remember, they will get the ball to start the second half. McCaleb. Trying to be patient along that offensive line, looking for a hole to cut back up through and tackled at the 27. And this two minute pace, it fits Auburn very well. That's pretty much their normal pace. The NASCAR pace as Nick Saban referred to it with us in our meeting. So we expect them to be aggressive here and try and get some points. Minute 25 left, 72 yards to go. Todd from the shotgun, swings it out. Little pitch and catch, Fannin. He'll step out of bounds, stops the clock with a minute 16. And that bubble screen is a play that Auburn uses very, very frequently, and right there, Javier Arenas was the one that was flexed outside. Tommy Trott, the big tight end, he said when he flexes out, they're going to try and pull that bubble screen. He knew it was coming, but Tommy Trott did a great job of shielding him from the play. Well, so many different offensive sets. You know, Kirby Smart, i got to go back. The defensive coordinator for Alabama said, I feel like we're going to be chasing ghosts. They've done some chasing here in the first half. Up and caught. Wow, man coverage wide open. Adams just broke behind coverage and made that grab behind Kareem Jackson. Kareem Jackson, I believe, fell down, Craig, and that allowed Darvin Adams to get behind him down the sideline. A good job by Chris Todd of finding him and just delivering a catchable ball right there. You can see there's uh, Kareem Jackson obviously a little bit baffled by what happened. Either he fell or he was expecting help over the top. A gain of 27 yards, and now you have to think Auburn's thinking, well, we can hit the end zone. If not, maybe a field goal. The blitz, they roll out the catch. Oh, it took a shot. And Fannin covers up at the 40-yard line. Boy, that, that was right on the jaw. How did he stay on his feet? Well, he's down now. Well, you, you could tell when he got hit that he was almost out, out on his feet. A staggering blow. Could hear it and you see how he kind of buckled right there i cannot believe he stayed on his feet and he's at the sideline doctors taking a look we'll step aside under a minute to play first half in auburn we're going to keep it here 14 all yeah he's uh he's having a look and i can't blame him fan that just took a shot i thought he'd go down oh a staggering I, blow it was sheer instinct that kept him on his feet this guy is a low to tough tough runner he does not go down easily but that alabama defense had the perfect perfect call queued up right there that pressure coming from the side that chris todd was trying to roll to and then you saw Mar marquise johnson come up and just deliver a wicked hit as he caught the ball two timeouts remaining for auburn three for alabama sunday on the amazing race only two episodes to go but will one team suffer a game-changing penalty? The Emmy-winning Amazing Race, new episode Sunday after 60 minutes, only here on CBS. Shotgun, Todd takes again. A glance at that sunline. I'm sure the Alabama locker room will be quite interesting to try to make adjustments to this different style of play by Auburn at halftime. Rolling out, setting up. And trying to one hand it was Tate. That ball falls incomplete, stops the clock, and it's third and 13. Well, I'll tell you, dangerous, dangerous throw by Chris Todd. Marcel Darius, number 57, the big defensive lineman. The right end almost got in there and, and got a hand on that. Could have tipped it up and been an interception very easily. 
They sniffed out that screen very well there. Tied seven of 11 here in the first half for 70 yards. Again, the glance back. Play clock to eight. Play clock to six. He's going to have to hurry down to three. Got it to one. Time and out. a timeout. So they burn one of their two timeouts remaining here. 53 ticks on the first half clock. We're coming back after this. Alabama and Auburn tied at 14, under a minute to play here in the first half. One timeout remaining for the Tigers, three for the Crimson Tide if needed. Tigers led by 14 after one. Alabama roared back with two touchdowns to tie it here in the second quarter. As time goes from the shotgun, pressure from the corners, he's flushed. At midfield, rolling, rolling, and skips that ball out of bounds, incomplete. So that brings up fourth down. Upshaw lost his hat, straps it back on. With Courtney Upshaw, number 41, loses his helmet right up here at the top of the screen. You see it flying off of there. And, and it's a good thing nothing's inside. That was Zimba. Having a little one-on-one -on -one battle with Upshaw. And now Clinton, Clinton Durst will try to punch it inside the 10-yard line. Arenas is back to receive. High hanger, fair catch, taken, 12-yard line. Well, tonight, Dave's got Bill Murray, plus Precious Star, Gabare Sidibe. And Dave drops 70, 750 pounds of pumpkin. I'm watching. That's Late Show, followed by The Late Show, Craig Ferguson, only on CBS. I said, Dave's always got something. He's dropping. Oh, it's coming from everywhere. And Gene Chizik, I think Nick Saban and Gene Chizik both, given, given the way this game has gone to this point, got to be happy with the prospect of going into 14 all. I think Gene Chizik would have taken that before the game started, without a doubt. Auburn, three timeouts with 39 seconds to play. And Ingram slides past the 20 up to the 21 block, the left tackle with the stop. And that was his best run of the day. And Auburn, Auburn, or Alabama seems content to let the clock run out here, backed up in their own end. You know, the clock runs, what do you expect? What kind of, what kind of, uh, well, they're going to come back to the line. So they make you think they're not going to run a play, and they rush back up and, and are ready to hike it. Right back to Ingram. Antoine Carter with the tackle. And the clock now will run down. Final seconds of the first half. The hometown Tiger fans on their feet applauding. Nick Saban heads in the locker room with plenty to talk about. That ends the first half. Alabama, Auburn tied up at 14. Let's take you now to Tim Brando in our New York studio. Welcome back, Auburn, Alabama, number two ranked Alabama 14 and the Tigers 14. Craig Bowler, Jack, along with Steve Berline. Hope you enjoyed the first half and a first half of big plays, especially in that opening quarter by the Tigers. I think both teams would be happy right now knowing the situation early in the game to be 14 apiece. Auburn came out early, striking quick. The reverse to Terrell Zachary right there set up very, very well. The nice cutback. Totally caught Alabama off guard. It looked like Alabama had no idea where Auburn was coming from. And then right away after the second touchdown for Auburn, they come with the onside kick, surprise onside kick, picked up by Byron. And then defense was flying around all over the place. Josh Barnes, the middle linebacker, had a great first half shutting down Mark Ingram. But Alabama kept their composure, kept their poise, came back with two touchdowns. Second one right there to Colin Peak, the big touchdown pass. Very, very good job of Alabama keeping their poise and staying in this ball game. Steve, listen, Steve, you look at the first half trends. Ingram, a big story. Ten carries, 21 yards. Uh, those are the least yards in the first half this season. Alabama's offense, first quarter, 37. They bounce back with 127 in the second. Todd 
7 to 12 passings for 70 yards in Auburn's offense. It was a tale of two quarters. Dominant in the first 15 minutes, not so much in the second. Yeah, definitely Alabama's defense settled down after those first two drives and really started coming with some nice pressures to try and get pressure on Chris Todd so he couldn't get comfortable back there and, and really did a good job of checking. When, when Auburn tried to check to a good play for them, Alabama would switch their defense up, and that really adjusted and worked out well for them. Auburn will receive the kick to start the second half. That ball takes a bounce just inside the 10, and Deadman Washington picks it up and is tackled down around the 23-yard line. So Auburn will have the football, and you look at the first half possessions by the Tigers, out and running early, four plays into the end zone, 12 plays, 58 yards, and then three straight punts. And then, of course, the fumble right before the half, the sack fumble. Eric Anders for Alabama caught, caught the right opportunity, the right lane to get to Chris Todd and cough that ball out. Alabama did not capitalize on that, but... The bottom line is that they really have regrouped on defensive, uh, defensively. Then Tate sets up alongside Chris Todd. First play, third quarter. Tate, got to be patient, follows his blockers and leans up past the 25 to the 28-yard line. Tate in that first half, 11 carries for 40 yards. Zachary, the big story, the one carry. And boy, he sliced his way through the Alabama defense for 67 yards in the opening touchdown. What I'm going to watch for this second half, Craig, is the, the big loss. I think the toughest loss for Auburn this year was a loss two weeks ago to, Alab to, to Georgia, where they collapsed after having the 14-point lead. We'll see if they can still find a way to stay in this ball game, keep aggressive, keep making plays on offense, and try not to get themselves in a position where they have to come from behind to win this ball game. Tate up to around the 33-yard line. Dederick, the defensive end for Alabama with the tackle. Well, I'll tell you what I want to watch and see who's going to win the battle of emotion here, Steve, in the second half. This is the Iron Bowl. This is all about Alabama, the state of Alabama, and bragging rights to go with it. Well, you come out with all that gas in the tank. you got to wonder who's got some left. Third down and one, little pitch out. Tate breaks a tackle and dropped at the 30-yard line, short of the first down. They needed a yard, and they lost two. Cody along with Kareem Jackson team up to make the tackle for Alabama Cody's been active this afternoon big senior from Fort Myers Florida and there's a Jackson out of Macon Georgia well, Gus Malzahn told us that he thought Terrence Cody was definitely the most disruptive player on Alabama's team probably one of the most disruptive players in the country that he can get that penetration back there across oh. Durst the high hanger Arenas takes it back at the 21 and put up a hand. Fair catch. So mark it at the 22. So Bama will have their first possession of the second half when we come back. A 48-yard kick. We're tied at 14 in Auburn. Well, it could be a number one, number two matchup in the SEC championship game where they both can score. Gators and Crimson Tide, and they don't allow much scoring. 9.8 leads the nation, 9.9 .9 right behind is Bama. They've been one and two pretty much all year, but a little bit of work left oh, for yes. Alabama today. They've got to find a way to deal with this Auburn Tiger football team. Yeah, Griddle's hot, isn't it? From the shotgun, McElroy. Pressured and throws that ball into the turf incomplete. Uh, Darius Hanks was in the area and the pressure from Nick Fairley. And Steve Berline, time for our AFLAC trivia question. And this may take you back a bit, but can you name the one man who has coached both Alabama and Auburn in football and who is he? Who is he? Think on that. We'll have the answer a little bit later. Crowd is jumping here in Auburn, second down, 10. Tigers showing blitz. Brett snap, it goes to Ingram. Tries to cut his way through that Auburn defense. It's been that way all day long, and guess who? Josh Bynes, the middle linebacker. He's not falling for anything. I'll tell you, Nick Saban would love to find a way to get 
Mark Ingram involved in this ball game. Find a way to get him a lane or two to get some confidence going. But Josh Bynes is saying we'll have none of that. He did not care. I think his assignment is to go wherever Ingram goes. He's not going to worry about any fakes. He's going to mirror Mark Ingram wherever he goes. You know, he has not been blocked all afternoon. Not been touched. Open lanes right to Mark Ingram. Third down and nine. Play clock to six. The snap is low. McElroy steps up in the pocket. Hit from behind. And that's an incomplete pass. And so Auburn's defense comes out with a little attitude to start the second half. Antonio Coleman from the left side bringing the heat. Antonio Coleman and Nick Fairley, number 90, were both right there. Antonio Coleman made the initial hit. And Greg McElroy is very lucky this ball was not tipped out in a fumble prior to that arm coming forward. It was very close. You could see Antonio Coleman bearing down on him. Aub Auburn hoping for the fumble. Alabama very fortunate that was not a turnover deep in their own territory. B.J. Fitzgerald set to punt inside his own 10-yard line. Devin Washington at his own 35. High hanger. Washington watches it drop at the 35. Takes a Bama bounce up inside the 25-yard line. A 54-yard punt. No return. 14-all in Auburn. Auburn and Alabama tied up at 14. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports provided by DirecTV. Flying high above Jordan Air Stadium this afternoon. 70th season inside this house. And over 87,000 on hand. What a glorious day. Day after Thanksgiving. I know you're full of turkey. <laughs> and, and everything else that goes <laughs> along with it. That's what I thought. I was waiting. Mm -hmm. Little mashed potatoes. I watched it last night. I didn't push away from the table. I'll tell you that. I get to do it again with my family tomorrow. Cody Burns. Wildcat quarterback. Changes directions. Makes a nice cut. And rumbles up near the 30-yard line. And now, time for our Red Lobster. Presents today's scholar athlete. And that athlete is Auburn Junior Center Ryan Pugh. A 3.45 GPA in building science and a 2009 academic all-district second team. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the Ole Miss General Scholarship Fund. I should say Auburn. That'd be more appropriate, I think. Todd pumps, throws deep, got man coverage, wide open, goodbye, Adams, 10-5, touchdown. story in Auburn in the first half Zachary goes 67 and now Darvin Adams breaks away on a 72 yard touchdown catch I, I am shocked by what Mark Barron the starting strong safety was doing out there covering Darvin Adams the best receiver for Auburn that's usually a corner out there I don't know how they got that matchup out there but boy made him pay for it big time. Extra point. Adams, he'll remember this one. 72 yard, his 10th touchdown reception of the season. Only the second receiver in Auburn history with 10 or more touchdown catches in a single season. And Chris Todd is loving it. Two plays, 76 yards. And Adams goes 72 yards on the touchdown reception. And Auburn leads now 21 to 14. And Mr. Todd has just set a single season record for touchdown throws now with 21 all by himself. So set to kick is West Byron. Nick Saban wearing a groove on that sideline. Number two ranking, undefeated season. In doubt, down by seven, 11 minutes to play third quarter. Arenas at the goal line. Here he comes. At the 10, 15, quick as a rip. Watch out! Arenas 40, one man to beat, stacked up, dropped it out of bounds. The watery turn at the 45 yard line. 
McFadden with the tackle, a 46-yard return. And this is the lane. This is the one thing that you got to worry about with Javier Arenas all the time. If you're trying to tackle him on your coverage team, you definitely got to watch out. Time for the Jack Link's beef jerky action cam on that replay. And you can see the wedge set up very nicely. You give, you give Arenas a seam. He's going to hurt you in a hurry. Fortunately, he fumbled the ball out of bounds. That was the only way he was going to be stopped. Now let's see if Alabama can answer Auburn's touchdown. On the ground they go. And the ball carrier is Ingram. And he pushes his way into Auburn territory at the 48-yard line. Ingram so far today has been corralled by Auburn's defense, especially one man, Josh Bynes, the middle linebacker. 12 carries now for Ingram, 27 yards. Averages 127 a ball game. And we're seeing a concerted effort by Alabama to get him back in the flow here. We'll see if it works to their favor. He's seven yards behind McElroy, takes the handoff, and again up the middle, not much, and stacked up, driven back. Back at the 45, let's take you now to Tim Brando in New York for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Tim. Well, Ingram's uh, chief competition, Craig, is Colt McCoy. He threw for over 300 yards. He rushed for 175, and believe me, he needed all of it to stave off Texas A&M. It was his 44th consecutive starting quarterback victory, a national record. And Tim Tebow will be on the air tomorrow as Florida plays host to Bobby Bowden in Florida State on CBS. Back to you. All right, Tim, thanks so much. And the Heisman race, undecided. Undecided, Colt McCoy's in that mix. You gotta think, despite the injury, Tebow still has some votes coming. It depends on that game tomorrow with Florida State. And you know what, Ingram, I thought maybe had it locked, but Auburn is uh, stalling out that drive to the Heisman. Well, and right here, you're gonna see a great job by the uh, Auburn front seven. And there's Josh Bynes shooting in there, creating penetration. It was a third in, in less than a yard for Mark Ingram to get. You don't see him shut down very often. This Alabama offensive line usually can dig him out of there. Auburn trying to get the crowd pumped up because well, Alabama's going for it. Well, listen, down. listen to this crowd. A half a yard, play clock to five. McElroy under center, the snap, handoff. Got it. Ingram. It's going to be close, Craig. I don't know if he did get it. It's going to depend on the spot. Well, Auburn says no. Yeah, that, I thought he turned his shoulders upfield. You look at that ref right there. He's a little no, shorter you're right. marker. You are right. Looking to mark him about six, seven inches from that first down marker. And Saban has a, a right to be concerned right there. He's got a good reason to be concerned. You're going to see just a great job of piling things up, and that was Super job by Darren Bates coming off the edge and making that initial contact to stop Mark Ingram's surge. Not once, Steve, but twice they have put the stopper on Ingram. Short. It's short. Well, Nick Saban having a word with his fine running back, and look at the emotions on that Auburn sideline. What a stand to take on Ingram. Not once, but twice. Twice. Third and one and fourth and less than one. To shut down this man who, no doubt about it, coming into this game was the front runner for the Heisman Trophy behind a powerful offensive line to not pick up one yard and two carries. What a, what a testament to this Auburn defense. So the Tigers take the football on downs. Ben Tate sets up alongside the play action by Todd. He'll throw to the flat, a one-handed catch in and out of the hands of Fannin. Well, that right there was a play that I, I know Chris Todd would like to have back. A little bit of pressure forced him to throw that ball before he was quite set to do it. Mario Fannin had room to catch this thing and turn up the sideline if it would have been a clean throw and catch, but not to be. Second down and 10. Todd, 10 of 16, 145 yards and a pair of touchdowns. As he did in the first half, he'll take a glance at Gus Malzahn, the offensive coordinator. And they've worked the play clock down all afternoon.
take the ball carrier. Stacked up. Rolando McLean, the middle linebacker. Time now for the answer to our AFLAC trivia question. Only one man has coached both Alabama and Auburn in football, and who is he? Well, if you got this one, Steve, you go way back in football history. It's yeah. G.H. Harvey. Auburn back in 1893. Alabama coached. He coached back in 1901. <laughs> That, that was that was my second guess. <laughs> oh, some great coaches along the way. Yeah. Pat Dye, of course, Auburn, the Bear, Alabama. Under eight minutes to play, third quarter. Time. Well, I'll tell you what, that Alabama defense was in the huddle of Auburn that time. They knew exactly what was coming at them. Much, very different than the previous drive where Auburn did catch him on the big play touchdown to Darvin Adams. You know what it turned out to be, Craig? It was a corner blitz that put Mark Barron trying to come over the top to cover for his corner, Javier Arenas, who was blitzing. Auburn had the right call. It was a double move to Darvin Adams. It went for a touchdown. That time, Alabama did a good job shutting down Auburn. Durst, beautiful kick taken at the 11-yard line. Arenas again breaking free down. Sideline stops and goes 40. Tackle from behind at the 35 yard line. This young kid is a magical returner. What can you say about him? I mean, he he, he only needed 104 yards over the course of the rest of this season to set the NCAA all time record for punt return yards to break Wes Welker's record. He's very close to doing that at this point. He just absolutely has no doubt what to do with that football once he gets it in his hands. He said, he said that when the ball's in the air, he's a little bit nervous, but when he gets it, he expects to score every time he touches it. I tell you, did you see him direct traffic? Oh, hey, yeah. you get him. <laughs> I'm heading to the sideline. He is uh, amazing. Pitch and catch. Jones down the sideline. And that's nice. Nice. Yeah, I got him. You saw his head tilt downward. And a flag is out on the far side and another on the near side field of the field. Uh, you know, I'm just telling you, if, if, if that ball is thrown to him and I'm out there trying to tackle Julio Jones, I want no part of it. But uh, to Auburn's credit, they have done a good job of keeping him under control today. And we'll listen in here to Penn Wagers. Personal foul. Grasping the face mask on the defense. Penalty, half the distance to the goal. Automatic, first down. So first down Alabama Wednesday on CBS. Gather the family, it's time to celebrate with everyone's favorite holiday classic, the one and only Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Wednesday, only on CBS. Well, there's no doubt about this one. You can see right there, Jonathan Evans comes over and grabs that face mask. Alabama trying to answer the bell. True freshman is Jonathan Evans. Running back Richardson. And is tackled down around the 11 yard line, right on the shoe tops. Antonio Coleman with the tackle. Jonathan Evans, a true freshman, as you said, Greg, starting for the injured El Toro Freeman, who both Nick Saban and Gene Chizik told us in our meetings with him this week that he was one of the one of the key players the very most important player on the Auburn defense hasn't played it down today he's had an ankle problem could not suit up today second down seven under six minutes of play in the third quarter play clock to six down to five Ingram looking for blockers no he's gonna pass in and out of the hands of Jones Oh, Nick Saban came up with a dandy play. And I'll tell you, it came up perfectly, Craig. Absolutely perfect. Mark Ingram does a great job of selling the sweep there on the left hash, selling it a high, wide sweep, and Julio Jones is wide open. Mark Ingram doesn't throw many passes, and I'll tell you, it's something that's hard to coach and hard to, to, to understand until you're in the position. But when you're running to your right, that ball does drift to the right, so you almost have to throw it right at the receiver. You can't lead him. Bama, two of eight on third down conversions. 
Mark Lees Mays, the motion man, play clock to one, just got the snap away, pressure, McElroy throws, and it's incomplete, right at the feet of Ingram. And boy, the pressure has been on all day on McElroy. This time it's Nick Fairley, big number 90, the left tackle. Yeah, as this game has gone along, I, both defenses have found a way to create pressure on the quarterbacks. I'll tell you, Nick Saban, though, and Jim McElwain, that, that sweet pass to, by Mark Ingram was called at the perfect time. It was set up perfectly. Your Heisman Trophy candidate has got to make that throw. And Julio Jones has to find a way to make that catch. Tiffin 0 for 1 on the day. This will be from the far hash mark from 27 yards. And it's good. So Tiffin trims Auburn's lead 21-17 on CBS. How about tomorrow? The Home Depot SEC on CBS spices up the holiday. 3.30 Eastern Florida State taking on number one ranked Florida. The Gators taking on the Seminoles. And all the buildup begins with TIAA Kreft. College football today. Check it out tomorrow right here on CBS. Now that's last scoring drive. Five plays, 23 yards, and Tiffin boots it in from 27 yards. But I think you have to consider that a success for the Auburn defense to hold Alabama to just a field goal, especially when Julio Jones was wide open for a touchdown on the, third, on the second down play. So Tiffin. Well, that ball took a left-handed turn out of bounds at the 25. The flag comes out, and how about Auburn at the 40-yard line to start this drive? Uh, that, that wasn't even close. I don't know what, what Tiffin is doing here today. He's a, he's a fantastic kicker, but he both of his field goals. Kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. First down. Both of his field goals, he's not hit solid right there. That was an ugly kick, but Auburn's offense has not been ugly, especially with the big plays. We saw in the first drive, Terrell Zachary took the reverse all the way to the house to get this crowd into it early. And then right when we came out in the second half, Auburn needed to reestablish control. They caught a corner blitz. Chris Todd hit Darvin Adams right on, on the money over the top of safety. Mark Barron trying to cover for the corner blitz. It goes all the way to the house. Auburn now has the 21-17 lead. With the football up by four, Ben Tate bangs his way past the 40 to the 41. Luther Davis with the tackle. Tate came in 1,209 yards rushing. And of course, the matchup was on the other side with Ingram. And so far, Tate has won the rushing battle this afternoon. Clock running up on five minutes to play. Third quarter, Tate lines up behind Todd. Todd steps, throws a dart over the top, picked. Mark Barron still on his feet. Oh, he took a shot on the numbers by Darvin Adams. Hello. This is just a really bad throw here. No other way to put it by Chris Todd. There's pressure coming. He throws it up for grabs high over the middle. Mark Barron with his seventh interception of the season. Ooh, oh, boy. Oh, they just replayed that in the house. Darvin Adams finished it off, but boy, the throw was intended to go to Darvin Adams, but wow, since he didn't get the ball, he wanted to deliver a pop. Oh, he, he sure got did it. right yeah, there. Yeah, he sure did. Seventh interception of the season for the top-ranked strong safety in the SEC, Mark Barron. Bama coming right back. McElroy connects Julio Jones at the 25-yard line. So Bama trying to turn the tide after that field goal by Tiffin. One of the best times to take a shot offensively is when your team comes back out on the field after a big turnover with desirable field position like Alabama had right there. Julio Jones does a great job keeping his feet, getting back to his feet. And Greg McElroy fortunately had the time to sit there and wait for Julio Jones to come open. Good, solid starting play to a drive after the big turnover. Five receptions, 50 yards for Julio Jones. Contact flags at the line of scrimmage.
Well, was it Vlahos, the center, or was it Jake Ricks, the defensive tackle? Right to the snap, offside, 91 on the defense. It's Jake Five Ricks. Penalty, down made first. And Steve, I tell you, as we head down the stretch of the season, here's the BCS top 10. Of course, Florida number one, taking on the Seminoles of Florida State on CBS tomorrow. Of course, Bama's on the field as we speak. How about Texas? They struggled, but came out with a win over A&M. They had all they wanted for oh, A&M last more. night. If it wasn't for a late kick return for Texas, we might not be saying they won that ball game. Richardson piled up and Richard dropped to the 16-yard line. Well, Craig, I'll tell you, though, one of the things that a coach like Gene Chizik and a, any, any football coach knows that when you're in control of a football game against a good, a great football team like Alabama, you make a mistake like Chris Todd made there, throwing that ball carelessly over the middle of the field. Nine times out of ten at least, that's going to come back to haunt you. That's why Bama's making their second straight trip to the SEC title game at the Georgia Dome against Florida. Next Saturday here on CBS, coverage at 3 o'clock. Battling for yards. Again, Richardson past the 15-yard line. Well, for whatever reason, it seems as though Alabama's doing a much better job moving the football when Trent Richardson's on the field today. And that's That has to do a lot with the focus, I'm sure, of Auburn's defense on Mark Eager. Maybe when, when Trent Richardson comes in the game, they're subconsciously letting up a little bit. But Trent Richardson is running that ball with authority today. First and 10, clock under three minutes at the 13-yard line of Auburn. McElroy. Play clock. Three takes the snap. Hand off. Here he comes. Richardson. Second effort. And a pile of blue jerseys stack him up around the 10 yard line. Bates was there to meet him. Watch Antonio Coleman right here. He, he, he before the play, was calling out. He knew the run was going to the other side, to the right side of the field. His defense reacted and responded, trusted him. There was some key that Antonio Coleman got there that told him the run was going to go to the right side of the field, and his teammates responded. Well, the freshman from Pensacola, Florida, having an impact on this drive here in the second half. Jones and Hanks are lined up top of your screen. Shotgun. Oh, there's a fumble. And drop for a loss. Richardson. Usually you're taught, Steve, just go ahead and jump on that football. He was kind of bent at the hips, picked it up, and he's lucky he kept uh, possession. He, he is lucky, and that's a mistake. That, that's a freshman mistake. You know, you've got your starting quarterback who's a junior, who's been the guy all year long. He's been working with Mark Ingram most of the season. And right there, I think probably Trent Richardson took his eyes off the hole, maybe veered his course a little bit, a little bit differently than Mark Ingram would, and that almost was disastrous for Alabama. Third down 11. Bama 2 and 9 on third down tries. McElroy sets up, throws it out to the flat. Cock, Richardson, stacked up, driven back at the 13. Well, you hit it right on the head, Craig. Auburn has been very solid on third down defense today. Two for 10 now after not succeeding right there or, or succeeding defensively. They were ranked 17th in the country coming into this game, and it's held true today. They've done a great job with it. So Tiffin and to try another field goal. They will mark this at the 21. Let's see if he hits his ball solidly. He has not kicked the ball squarely yet today. Two field goals and his kickoff have not been very solid kicks. Coming right at you, a 31-yard attempt. Kick is away and curves that one in from 31 yards. So back-to-back -back field goals by Tiffin. Auburn, 21. Alabama, 20. Next Saturday here on CBS, two of the biggest names in college hoop collide, defending national champs. North Carolina taking on the Wildcats of Kentucky. The season premiere of college basketball here on CBS, the home of the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Seven plays, 30 yards. And how about back-to-back -back wins by Auburn's defense? They have held Bama twice now to field goals of 27 and 31 by Tiffin. Deep in the red zone both times, too. you got to give credit to them. Chris Todd put his defense in a very bad position with that turnover in his own territory. The defense 
They didn't hang their heads. They came out there and said, it's on us to make a stand, and they did it two times. I think Nick Saban wants to see if Tiffin can actually keep this ball in bounds. He's knocked it out twice and has given Auburn five field position at the 40-yard line. Auburn up at the 30, angles it to the corner. Washington at the goal line. Here he comes. Washington 10, 15, 20. Head to the sideline, breaks the tackle, and wiggles his way down to the 35-yard line. So, yes, Auburn with five field position after the return by Washington. 17 seconds to play here in the third quarter. And so far, key players. McElroy, 149 yards, a touchdown. Ingram, 15 carries, just 29 yards. That's less than two yards a carry. Todd, two touchdowns a pick. And Tate, 14 carries and 46 yards on the ground. And the key has been Ingram, for sure. There's, there's no doubt in my mind. And anybody watching this game, you're expecting to see impressive numbers out of Mark Ingram. Give credit to Auburn's defense again. Little pitch in round. Zachary. Stiff arms. There's a flag down to the 38. That's not in a good spot if you're an Auburn fan. Zachary, of course, broke that same. There's a hold. Zachary broke that same play in the first quarter for 67 yards. Exactly right. And, and maybe against... Uh, a team of lesser ability, you can run the same Holding play. Number 44 on the offense. Penalty 10 yards from the spot of the foul. That's been down remain first. Now Ben Tate. Ben Tate call with the holding, but you got to wonder about the the wisdom of, of trying to go with a, a trick play two times in the same game against the defensive quality of Alabama. They're, they're not going to, you may get them once, but it, I don't think many people are going to get them twice for the same play. And the third quarter clock runs dry. Auburn 21, Alabama 20. Fourth quarter straight ahead. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching CBS Sports, home of the SEC Championship. Well, the sun is setting in Auburn, Alabama. The 74th annual Iron Bowl and is coming down to the wire. 21-20 Auburn over number two ranked Alabama. 15 minutes to play. Well, we had a good feeling, Craig, we were going to have a great football game today. We've gotten every bit of it to this point. Expect a, a pretty strong fourth quarter to finish it off here. So first and 20 for Auburn. A little quick flip near side. And we break the freshman with the catch. And he picks up 12 yards up to the 32-yard line. Craig Bowerjack, Steve Erline. You know what? It's almost prophetic what uh, Gene Chesick told us in our talks this week. He said, stay close, and if we can, we will have a plan to win this game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, he had three keys for this game coming into it. He said, number one, he didn't want his players to peak too soon. Number two, he didn't want to throw everything into the first quarter. Now, they almost did, but they've come out in the second half, made some big plays and done it. And then third, have a plan to win it at the end. Well, they're going to have a chance to win it at the end. We'll see if they can execute. Todd in trouble. Breaks a tackle. Still on his feet. 30, 35 at the 40. Somehow, Todd with a little Houdini act, and this crowd is up and roaring. <laughs> well, I don't. I think Chris Todd probably surprised himself here a little bit. He, he, if, if he believes he's a running quarterback, he's the only one in this building that believes he's a running quarterback. But that's a heck of an effort right there. Tip your hat to him. Great pickup on first down, turning a bad play into a really good positive play. 16-yard gain, ripped his jersey along the way for Chris Todd. Tigers try the middle, Ben Tate, and very little. Very little. Moments uh, earlier today, Gene Chizik with his pregame speech to his Auburn Tigers. We will win the game today. Your coaches love you and believe in you. You love each other and believe in each other. Don't look at that scoreboard. You just keep playing. I don't care what happens. We're up by 14. We're down by 14. You don't look at that scoreboard. You play football. You fight. You're not playing again for five weeks. You fight. It's a brawl. It's a street fight. 
for 60 minutes. It is a street fight for 16. They got over 13 to play and a one point lead. Tate, the catch, and is driven out of bounds at the 47 yard line. That's Marquise Johnson, the left corner, number 24 with the tackle. Boy, I'll tell you what, Chris Todd took a shot right here from a couple of people. Brandon Diedrich, number 95, was one of them, coming in right through the rib cage right there. Good job standing in the pocket, delivering a, a good solid dump down, dump off, check down type of throw to give himself a desirable third down opportunity. Third down and four. Four wide receivers set. They really spread the field. Todd settles back in the pocket all day to throw. Ball is up and incomplete. And that was a near interception. Well, you you near could, picked. You could see, Craig, that Chris Todd was locked in on Darvin Adams the whole way. He had good protection. Ben Tate steps up and picks up the pressure from number 32, Eric Anders. But right there, boy, that ball Nico. should have been picked off by Nico Johnson. Chris Todd, very, very fortunate. He was looking to Darvin Adams the whole way. You can't get away with that against Alabama very often. Well, the punt is away, but the officials step in. Timeout, Alabama. And Alabama First called time timeout of the half. before the punt. And so they'll burn a timeout with 12.34 to play. Auburn 21, the Crimson Tide 20 on CBS. And now, it's time for our Geico Game Recap. Iron Bowl 74, a game of big plays. Terrell Zachary, 67 yards to start this game off, and a 7-0 Auburn lead. Then Chris Todd to Eric Smith, throws it out. Two-yard touchdown, 14-0. That was after an onside kick. Second quarter, all Alabama. Trish Richardson, a two-yard touchdown run to close the gap. Then McElroy finds his tight end, Carlin Peake, who finds the end zone. We're tied at 14 at the half. Third quarter, Todd goes deep. Darvin Adams, 72 yards. And the Tigers take a 21-14 lead. Bama comes back, back-to-back -back field goals by Tiffin. That one covers 27, and then a 31-yard kick. And Steve Berline, that's where we stand, 21-20. Iron Bowl 74. And more to come. The Javier Arena set to return, and he has been dynamite on kick returns this afternoon. The kick is away, and a boomer. Arenas lets this ball fall inside the 10. How about that? At the two-yard line. Washington grabs that ball, downs it, and Bama will start inside their own five. A 43-yard kick. Well, this is absolutely perfect on Durr's part. He gets this ball up in the air, got, gets it to come down right on that five-yard line. Great coverage by the Auburn coverage team. And Mr. Clinton Durst right there says that's what I'm talking about. That's what you work on by yourself all week long it's on the other field. Exactly right. Doesn't get any better than that for a punter. Well, Alabama, they outscored their opponents 96-24 in the fourth quarter. They'll need another score to win this one. The flag is down. They're going to stop play as Ingram is dropped at the seven-yard line. Dead ball, false start, 75 on offense, half the distance to go. That's the right guard, Barrett Jones, and Wednesday on Showtime, JB, Chris Collinsworth, Phil Sims, and Warren Sapp bring you all the best on the Emmy Award winning Inside the NFL, Cable's longest running show. That's Inside the NFL Wednesday on Showtime. Well, you can't move it back much further. Inside the one. And another whistle stops play. Well, Greg McElroy told us before the, before the game, he said one of the keys is to get this crowd out of the game. They've not succeeded. Head ball, ball start, 84 on the offense, half a different go. Colin Peake, now I'm wondering, can they hear that deep in that end zone? That's what I was about to say. This is exactly what Greg McElroy was talking about. I can tell you, Craig, I've been there they can hardly hear Greg McElroy in the huddle, much less when he's up there behind the center trying to call the snap count. That's why Greg McElroy wanted to get in control of this game early. 
Ingram five yards deep in his end zone. He'll get the snap off this time. McElroy wants to throw. He does. It's caught. Ingram is tackled down at the seven-yard line. Boy, gutty call as he steps back in his end zone and finds Ingram. Well, it, it, it is a gutsy call, but in my opinion, if you've got confidence in your quarterback, that's a great opportunity to take a shot. I, I, I always loved that mentality in, a, in an offensive coordinator, head coach, when you're backed up on first down, you never know if you're one of your playmakers is going to get open up the field. Give him a shot to make a play. Maybe you get a pass interference. You're number two in the country for a reason. You got to you got to do what you got to do. Play clock down to six. McElroy under center. Steps back. Looks. Nowhere to go. Oh, he took a shot. Driven back inside the five. Nick Fairley was there. Antoine Carter, number 45, in on that tackle. Uh, there was <laughs> there was a few people. You had Antonio Coleman in there, too. The pocket was being pushed. Greg McElroy, very fortunate. That many bodies coming after him that he did not cough that football up. Oh, that end zone is standing. It is loud. Yeah, the folks at Auburn can sense it. Bama 2 of 10 on third down conversions. They need eight to keep the chains moving. McElroy dumps it off. Incomplete. Ingram tied up with the umpire. And Bama will have to punt. Well, a great job again by the Auburn defense. I, I really feel like if Greg McElroy is able to complete that ball, you might have a chance to turn it straight up the field and get it close to that first down. Unfortunately, he couldn't set his feet and make that throw. There was pressure coming once again out of Auburn. Now Fitzgerald needs the kick of the season out of the end zone. A good high hanger, Damon Washington at the 49. Puts a hand down, takes a shot, dropped to the 44. But still Auburn with five field position. 10.37 to play. 21-20. Auburn. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Red Lobster, John Hancock, LG, and by Bud Light. And buckle up, 10.37 to play in the fourth quarter. Auburn trying to pull the upset against number two Alabama. Music's biggest night kicks off with a Grammy nominations concert live. See if your favorite stars perform. LL Cool J will host the Grammy nominations concert live Wednesday right here on CBS. So do you try to eat clock with a one point lead or are you going home running? If I'm Auburn, this is the go zone right here. This is called the green zone in offensive terminology. You got the ball first down here. I say you take a shot. You got Darvin Adams right here. That's a great opportunity. Try and put this game away. They'll go to the ground. And the clock runs up on ten and a half. Tate knocked down by McLean along with Arenas. And I'm obviously not calling the plays for Auburn. But I think there are a lot of coaches, maybe, maybe it's this situation right here where you do take a shot because you can you can score quickly. Well what they're doing is also moving quickly back up to the line and not allowing Alabama to set their defense. They're still shifting up front. And now Todd takes a glance at the sideline. Alabama will make their own shift defensively. Second down nine, pitch on a tough catch, you got it. Dropped at the 50-yard line. I thought Tate had to take his eyes off, a little bit off the field, Steve. That ball was out in front. Well, Kareem Jackson does a great job. He had Cody Burns, the, the former quarterback right there, number 18, trying to block him on the outside. Kareem Jackson came by him like he wasn't even there. Cody Burns, you know, I don't care what kind of athlete you are, and he obviously is a special athlete, but if you're a converted quarterback, you have not stock blocked the cornerback on the outside very often. I question whether he being out there in front of an option play to that side is the right personnel decision. Auburn 3 of 10 on third down conversions. They are 0 for their last seven. Play action tied. 
Down he goes. And Rolando McClain making the big play for Bama. They came with Rolando McClain and Javier Arenas both off the left side. And right there, they both were coming clean. You can see right there, Eric Smith, number 32, can't block both of them, so he decides to block neither of them. And you know what? They, they may be the best corner blitz combo in college football. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. They, they, I mean, he loves to come off the edge, and he does a great job of it. So Durst will punt away at his own 25-yard line, end over end. Takes the Auburn bounce and will be touched down to the 20-yard line. So Bama down by one, 8.27 to play, back on offense when we come back on CBS. Eight twenty-seven to play. Auburn 21 and number two ranked Alabama 20. Don't forget later in the game we'll have the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. Stay tuned for that. And see if you look down at this season undefeated thus far for Alabama. Their average margin of victory over 22 points a ball game. The closest game was against Tennessee back in October. They won that game 12-10. And what's going through the mind of Nick Saban? Well, they're not used to being no, behind this exactly. late in the ball game. I'll tell you that right now. But I believe that Nick Saban and his confidence that he inspires in his team and the, the fact they feel like they're prepared for any situation, they believe they're going to win this ball game. I have no doubt in my mind about that. McElroy, the quarterback, handoff. Richardson bounces off a tackle and runs past the 25 and driven back to the 27-yard line. A good first play for this Auburn or Alabama offense. Trent Richardson right there does a great job of not panicking. He gets there was penetration up the field. He ran into his own offensive lineman, but was still able to bounce it and pick up five yards, six yards. I'm surprised that Ingram isn't on the field in crunch time. But you know what? You've made the point. Richardson seems to move this offense better than, than Ingram today. Today, no doubt about it. They're moving better with it, with uh, Richardson on the field. McElroy sets up in the pocket, throws. That ball was deflected at the line of scrimmage, incomplete. Stops the clock with 7.44 to play. Well, one of the things we said early in the game, Craig, is, is that Julio Jones has got to make a play up the field. Right there, that ball was definitely deflected. You can see the big right arm right there. Of Jake Ricks getting up there, knocking it down. But it's going to come down, in my opinion, Julio Jones has got to make a big play, not a six, seven yard play. Right here, that would work. But at some point in this game, Julio Jones right here is going to have to make a play. Julio, top of your screen. Third down three. He's wide open. There he is. Underneath, 30, 35. Put down a stiff arm and is wrestled down at the 37-yard line by McFadden. So move the chains first down, Alabama. There just comes a point in the game, Craig, where, where you have to go to your best playmaker that's on the field. And Mark Ingram, for whatever reason today, it's not his own fault. It's the fact that Auburn has really game-planned him well and taken him out of the game. Julio Jones is the guy that can get you where you want to go. You've got to find a way to get him the football in this drive. Six catches for 59 yards for Julio Jones. Clock runs up on seven minutes to play. 21-20 Auburn over number two ranked Alabama. McElroy, shotgun, play action pass, sets up his feet. Oh, hit from behind! Never, never saw the Tiger coming. That's and that's it. Coleman, Antonio Coleman. That's his second sack today, and man, he just, he just ran right by James Carpenter. The speed rush around the outside, and fantastic cutting ability. Watch how he plants on the right foot and cuts back underneath. And as you said, McElroy never saw him coming again, fortunate to hang on to that football. Well, he's a top sack man in the SEC. Nine and a half sacks on the season. Second down, 15, McElroy trying to set up the screen. Ingram, the catch, gets the motor run and spins out of a tackle, still on his feet. So tough after the initial hit. Let's send you now to New, to New York for this John Hancock update. Here's Tim.
All right, Craig, a number of people believe that uh, Nebraska could knock off Texas in the Big 12 title game, but they're going to need a healthy Zach Lee. Now, he injured his ankle. They taped it up. Uh, Bo Pelini's team is now ahead 21-14 as Colorado just scored. Well, actually, 21-13 pending the extra point. But they're going to need a healthy Zach Lee if they have any chance of beating Texas and causing havoc for the BCS next week in the Big 12 title game. Back to you. All right, Tim, thanks so much. And right you are. There's a Nebraska, the Big 12 North Division winners. McElroy, good protection. The catch, and not much, as Julio is cut down, chopped down by McFadden. It looks like it might be just enough for the first down, though, Craig. They needed five yards. And again, in this situation, I think it's great. You pick up, obviously, the yardage for the first down. I just cannot understand why Alabama has not tried to find a way to get the ball to Julio Jones up the field. It's hard to drive the ball any time against a defense 8, 10, 12 plays. It's very difficult to do that offensively, especially when you're trailing and there's five minutes left in the ball game. You'd like to make bigger yards. Alabama only two timeouts remaining. They had to burn one early. Auburn with three remaining as the clock now is going to become a factor as we hit the five-minute mark here in the fourth. Well, I think uh, uh, Alabama's mentality right now is this is the drive. They're not in any hurry to score right now. They're, 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 they're showing that they have not been willing to take a shot up the field. There's four minutes and 45 seconds left in this game. They know they only need a field goal to win. And Tiffin is very aware. He's two or three this afternoon. Eighth play of this drive coming up. Richardson alongside McElroy. Four and a half on the clock, second down eight. Low snap, McElroy, pressured, throws, caught. Julio Jones reaches past the 40 to the 39-yard line. Well, that's more like it. I like the coach's play call. I like Greg McElroy trying to go to his go-to guy. When he sees single coverage, you got to give the guy a chance to make a play. That was their biggest play in a while. He's picking up 11 yards right there, another first down. now. They've got to get the ball. The way Tiffin's kicking the ball today, I think that their mentality is they've got to get the ball at least to the 20-yard line. I would agree. Four minutes to play. Pitch, Richardson. And bucked out of bounds at the 36-yard line. That stops the clock, 3.54 to play. Well, two players that we talked about for Alabama, Mark Ingram and Julio Jones. Jones starting to warm it up a bit with eight catches, 76 yards. But how about Ingram? The Heisman hopeful, 16 carries, just 38 yards on the ground. Yeah, that's not a lot of electricity out of either one of those guys. A lot of catches for Julio Jones, but they've been able to keep him underneath. Play clock to six. McElroy sets up and throws. Jones. Makes that catch, spins out of the tackle to the 28-yard line, and got the first down by about a half a yard. So they're going to move the chains again. And you know what, Steve? You made the prediction. Keep going downfield. They've done once. They keep coming across on short routes to Jones, but they're they're getting first downs. Well, they are. They're they're executing very well. You got to give them credit for that. And now, now they want to start using the clock. And if I'm Gene Chizik or Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator for Auburn, if I've got anything left in my defensive gun right now. It's got to come out. You've got to do something special here. Somebody's got to step up and make a play because it's getting threateningly close, and they're going to a pressure defense right here. They bring it all to the line. They zero in on Ingram. He stacked up, and no gain at the 27. Alabama number two in the country. They will play in the SEC championship game, Steve, next week against the Florida Gators, who play tomorrow against Florida State. Now, an undefeated season is hanging in the balance, and also national title hopes are hanging in the balance here in Auburn today. It's all, it's all riding right here. There's no doubt about it. Now, another thing that Auburn needs to consider from their standpoint, too, is when you want to start using timeouts because Alabama's almost in field goal range right now. They're not worried about the clock anymore. Well, Auburn's got three to use, and the clock is coming up on two minutes. McElroy dumps oh, it off. Boy. Richardson room at the 20, at the 15. Chopped down at the 12-yard line. And what a hit by Darren Bates. Boy, but what a run by Richardson in the open field. Well, it was a perfect call for the perfect time. You're going to see a brilliantly executed screen pass 
right there. Nobody on the outside. Trent Richardson makes a makes a play, a big play out of that. I think you and I could have got at least three quarters of those yards <laughs> if we would have got the ball out there. But now Auburn has got to start thinking about timeouts here. There's a minute 50 left in this game. You want to get the ball back with as many seconds on that clock as possible. I don't know what they're waiting for. Well, this could be a championship drive guided by McElroy. An undefeated season at stake as they pop it up the gut. Richardson is pulled down by the shirt at the seven. And Ingram is shaken up. And oh my, that does not look good considering you got an SEC title game coming up at the Georgia Dome against Florida. So timeout Auburn. You know, Julio Jones, Steve, so quiet all day long. But, you know, big players step up at the right time. You, you got to have it. And, and I, I, you got to credit Nick Saban or whoever, Jim McEl McElwain, whoever made the decision to start calling his number. That was the right thing to do, no doubt about it. I don't think there's anybody in college football that can cover Julio Jones all day long, one-on-one. -on -one. And Greg McElroy has been able to find him many times on this series. Not in the, the, the fashion that I was kind of uh, hoping they would they would take uh, advantage of by trying to make a play up the field to Julio Jones but they've sure gone to him when they needed a completion a conversion and it's worked out very well for them timeouts Alabama two, Auburn two remaining and a 21 20 Tiger lead 134 to play Auburn if they want to pull the upset of the season they must come up big defensively right now. But they've got to step, step up and make two good plays here, force a field goal. Hopefully, from their standpoint, get the ball back with about a minute 20 left in the ball game. Give themselves a chance. And that's what that's what Coach Chiswick said he wanted to do. Have a plan to win it at the end. Second down, seven. Jones in motion. They're going to stay on the ground. Past the five-yard line goes Richardson. And the clock is going to stop. Another timeout used by Auburn. Well, Steve, if Alabama wins this football game, this will be known as the drive. The drive. We'll be back. Well, welcome back. And Alabama came up to the line, called another timeout. So both teams with one remaining with 129 to play. Steve, this drive, as you look at Ingram, who looks a little shaken, looks like the, well, they're holding that right arm, that right, or that left arm, pardon me, left arm of Ingram. But this drive, 14 plays, 75 yards, so far nearly seven minutes off the, off the game clock. You know what? That, that right there is a testament to this, this football team, this Alabama football team. They, they are a team that is well prepared and very confident in any situation. We talked how they fully expect to win this game. And no panic. No panic. They, they, they know they're a good football team. They know today's been a struggle. But they also know what this game means to Auburn. And if they find a way to win the ball game, it's not going to surprise them one bit. Uh, both coaches zeroing in on the final 129. Auburn has to hold them to a field goal. They got the big fella in the backfield. They're going to play action on the rollout. McElroy, touchdown up church! <laughs> Bama will go for two. Bama will go for two, no doubt about it. What a great play call and a great execution job by up church, McElroy. And when I said Auburn has to hold him to a field goal, I'm saying you don't want your team to have to score a touchdown at the end of the game. Obviously, Auburn's going to have a chance to tie or win this ball game. But right there, a great play, great execution by Alabama. Gene Chizik, not very excited about it. But you know what? His team still has a chance to win it at the end. That's what he was hoping for. Now there's 124 to play here in Auburn. So Bama will go for two. Nobody down here covering. There they come. Three wideouts, top of your screen. 
Beware the draw. Yes. McElroy sets, throws, it's picked off! Jake Ricks! Second interception for the big fella. I thought he was going to get ahead of steam rolling. Well, you're going to see he steps up and then steps back right into the lane. Good play. Alabama fans will remember this scoring drive as the drive. 15 plays. Alabama goes 79 yards, seven minutes off the clock. And Upchurch scores his first career touchdown for Alabama. McElroy, by the way, Steve Berline, on that drive, seven of eight, 63 yards. And seven of those uh, passes, were, or four of those seven, were caught by Julio Jones. Well, a super job by Greg McElroy. Just, just being poised, not being panicked. You could tell he didn't have happy feet back there. He was standing in there confidently, going through his reads, understanding that if there is a guy to get the ball to, it's going to be Julio Jones if he's open, but not even remotely giving in to the situation. He felt very comfortable as if he'd been waiting for that moment, that opportunity for his whole life. Did you see Tate and Todd having a, having a little walk along the sideline? They were ready to do battle down by five. Short kick taken at the seven. Washington right up the middle at the 20-25. Still on his feet. Breaks another tackle. Dances to the 25 and then stacked up. Auburn will take over at the 24-yard line. And here's the BCS top 10 as it stands at this moment. Of course, on top, you got Florida, who will play Florida State tomorrow. Texas, of course, in that mix, along with Alabama. You know, you, we haven't mentioned Cincinnati, Boise State. TCU. TCU. Yeah. There are some teams that are dialed in on this game. Boy, you know, that was this day. An Auburn win here, and they're going to have a chance. A touchdown will win it for them. They do need a touchdown. That opens the door for some people if it happens. Auburn with one timeout, and they must use it wisely. You know they're going to try to use a sideline to their advantage. Play action pass as Chris Todd throws, and it's dropped. McCaleb, the freshman. That stops the clock with 108, second down 10. Well, this is a situation where you, you don't want to panic if you're Auburn, but the short plays middle of the field aren't going to help you very much. you got to pick up, pick up chunks of yardage, or the short ones have to get out of bounds. Cody Burns, number 18, bottom of your screen, second down 10. Todd throws, it's caught, Tate pushes his way near the 35-yard line. Clock runs under a minute, and now it's hurry-up offense. Remember, yeah. Auburn, though, still with one timeout. If you're going to use the middle of the field, you'd like to get a first down to get that clock to stop while the chains move. They're burning valuable time right now. Shotgun. Todd. Tate, first down. All right, now they need to get on the line quick. Get on the line, get a play called while the chains are moving. 39 ticks. They're going to set them, and they'll wind the clock back up. One timeout for Auburn. Now the clock runs. you got to hurry. Todd. And now flags. Ah. You know, and Steve, you've been in this position. I'm curious, why can't you go ahead and play a two- or three-play series and just understand and get back into the hurry-up? The offense, 35 yards. And what happens when you try to rush it, then you get everybody out of sync and it's a false start. Yeah, you, you, you just, you cannot simulate this kind of a situation in practice. You've got to be ready to go. You've got to know how to do it automatically. You've got to know you can't throw it over the middle of the field if it's not going to pick up a first down and stop the clock. You got to go for the home run ball, but instead they're going to go on the ground right up the middle. There's a broken tackle. They've McCaleb, take a timeout. McCaleb tackled at the 45, 10 seconds to play. And now the oh. final timeout by Auburn. Boy, I... Third and final timeout of the half. Boy, game management here, the last minute timeout. 20. Uh, a little shaky. They, they've just not got enough plays in this minute. They had a minute 15 before the game, or before this drive started. And just to get only four plays is not, not, not good enough right there. Not, not even close. Uh, Auburn. Auburn uses their final timeout. 
And on that last drive, Steve Berline by Alabama. Well, just execution, very high level execution. Julio Jones made some nice short catches for first downs. Just enough on this one to get the first down and then the great play call and great execution by Upchurch and McElroy for the touchdown and the five point margin we see right now with 10 seconds left on the clock. I really don't know what Auburn's gonna do. They've gotta pick up the first down. The clock will stop. They'll probably try and clock it at that point and then get it in the end zone. Two plays? They've got time for two plays. If they get the first down here, they'll spike it and get one shot into the end zone, but they, they need to pick up some yards on this play. Second down. Play action pass, Todd. Up over the top, caught. Field is wide get open. Down. And you gotta get down, three seconds. They gotta spike it, and it's three seconds, it's gonna be tight. The ball is gonna be placed, and the clock's gonna start. Get you, under there, Todd. Yeah, you got you gotta move. They're down to two, spike it, one. He'll have one shot at the end zone. All right. One shot at the end zone to try to upset number two Alabama. Well, I don't think this is what Coach Chiswick was hoping for when he said he wanted to have a plan to win at the end of the game. I don't think he planned on winning by a Hail Mary, but you know what? They've got a shot. Got to be solid up front. And Coach Chiswick knows it's happened before. It's happened before. You remember, you can come up with all kinds of examples. Doug, Doug Flutie to Brian Brennan. Many, many years ago, we'll see what happens. Three lined up, bottom of your screen. Going for the home run ball. Todd goes deep. Jump ball! Incomplete, and Alabama stays undefeated. Alabama's first win at Auburn since 2001, and a jump ball, and look at that. That's like a volleyball kill. Yeah, you know, not to put any blame at all on that last play because you don't know what's going to happen. I would have liked Chris Todd to give his receivers a little more time to get the field. Didn't happen. Time now for the play of the game presented by Outback Steakhouse. And down the stretch, it capped off the drive. It was the winning touchdown. Again, Alabama never lost their composure the whole way down the field. Brilliant execution, brilliant preparation. Works out in their favor one more time. Now they set up the showdown they've been looking forward to all year. For Steve Berline, Craig Bullerjack, we say so long from Auburn. We're a final score. Alabama 26, Auburn 21. Tomorrow, college football continues here on CBS. Number one ranked Florida taking on Florida State. We'll send you to Tim Brando in New York after this. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports, home of the SEC Championship.